coming this summer. One is a right-wing conspiracy theorist. The other, a politically correct gay black man. Both well past their prime had they been a woman, but after being fired from their jobs, on the same day they found themselves sharing a common lawyer and a common enemy, the news. This summer, Tucker Carlson and Don Lemon form an unlikely alliance to bankrupt CNN and Fox by any means necessary. And this time, neither of them are looking for change. They are looking for big bills, ideally in the form of a bank transfer. Because when life gives you lemons, it's time to get lemon paid and leave the wallets of both stations a little tuckered out. You will laugh, ha ha, when Tucker finds out Lemon is a card-carrying member of MGTOW. What is that? Men That's going their own way. It's a popular <laughs> subreddit. It's Danny's organization. It's a gay group? And you'll wince when they accidentally touch hands, reaching for the same red bow tie. Doing a job they both secretly agree only a man can do. Watch a patron and an activist storm the capital the capital c capital n capital n capital f capital o capital x that took way too long for how funny it was <laughs> jussie smollett and edward norton star in no news is good news welcome to the boys cast the boys the boys cast the lads the boys cast the dudes The Boys Cast with a very special guest that has been years in the making. I will say that uh, this is, uh, I always say that, I feel like you have a philosophy of helping people more than most comics. So the I, if you do things, I'll, I'll do three podcasts I don't want to do for you being here. Yeah. <laughs> Paying it forward. That's what no, I, I do want to be here. You know, I, I owe you. How do you owe me? Oh, you know. Oh, are, <laughs> have we spoken about that? Have you guys spoken about that? Well, I, I, I think I mentioned it, but I didn't. I think go we into, briefly mentioned. I it, didn't yeah. go into crazy detail because oh, I wasn't sure so like what extent it was like a thing for you to not talk about. You know so, what I mean? So embarrassing. We could talk about. It. I think right. it's fun. So we're in Edmonton. No, Calgary. 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 <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, we got a lot of Canadian fans. Not gonna appreciate <laughs> that one. Schultz is big shot filming a movie with Peter Dinklage. <laughs> yeah, he's the he's the star. Peter Dinklage is the, the uh, yeah, he's, supporting he's, actor. He's the supporting actor, of course. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. My and big said, breakout role. <laughs> and you said Dinklage is cool, right? Dinklage is cool as hell, man. I'm not going to lie. I wanted him to come to the show, but he flew out of town. But um, yes, Dinklage, Juliette Lewis, who's a big fan of yours. Yeah, yeah. That's she a, also mentioned to me, she was like, are you going to see Ryan this weekend? It's like my one famous person that likes yeah, this, friend of the pod. <laughs> so, uh, and she's she's brilliant. Holy shit. But, uh, but yeah, and I was like, you know what? I think I'm going to go try to pop in on his shows. So I, I want to go to your shows. I don't want anybody from the cast coming. I don't tell anybody. They keep asking, are you doing any How comedy? How do they find out? Because of her? <sighs> she must have told somebody that their show's there, and I said I was going to go see you. Okay. And they're like, are you going to go on stage? And I was like, I don't know. I'm like trying to get out of it. Yeah, because you want to just work on stuff. I just want to work on shit. And I just want to hang. Like, I yeah, don't want to yeah, feel yeah. whatever. And, you know, God forbid anything goes wrong, I feel responsible. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so, so we're in Calgary and you're doing these shows. Shows are fucking packed, sold out, great crowds. Um, I go and I do the first one. Everything goes great. So much fun. Go do the second one. I get off. I'm in the green room talking to your boy Alex, who was very funny. Yeah, people went crazy when he went on to it. It was really cool. It was a really cool experience. And, um, and then all of a sudden I see, oh, for the second show, like 10 of the cast come. The director comes, fiance comes, like the stars are there. It, 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 10 people, there's everybody there. And I specifically tell the club, I go, listen, when they come, sit them in the back. Just sit them in the back, have a little section in the back. And that was like a thing that was <laughs> talked about multiple times. Multiple <laughs> times. And, I, and honestly, it was selfishly. It's like, I don't like... I don't want to look you in the eye yeah. as I like do material. Yeah, for sure. And you're trying to present yourself as this Hollywood guy. They haven't seen that side of you. Oh, <laughs> uh, to be honest with you, they know I'm not a Hollywood guy. <laughs> and we had a wild dinner the night, but I can't even say what happened. Anyway, but uh, but yeah, they know. I'm not the actor guy. They all know that. Okay. Like it is, it is what it is, right? So I'm basically, I'm there. They're in the back. I think they're in the back. I go on stage and I look to my left when I get on stage and the director there is there. It's a great dude. His fiance is there. And then like the two young stars of the movie are all up front, front row oh. to the left. 
specifically said, I was like, do not send anybody up front. So now I kind of got to ignore them while I'm doing my set. I don't know why that's weird. Why is it weird when you have... I think they moved up, by the way. They did. Yeah, because they, they sat uh, them in the back, and then these two, like, sort of moseyed to the front row. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know why is it awkward delivering material. To I think it. there's just the chance, too, where because sometimes you'll say something, like maybe a question, and, like, if they answer it, you yeah. know, and you're like, well, I know you. This is yeah. weird that we're talking in this context of like a show it also is inauthentic because if i know you i would talk to you exactly and now yeah. you're making me do that not either either be real and authentic in the moment where i have to have an interaction with you and talk to me <laughs> yeah. hey remember when we were having chinese food 30 yeah. minutes ago like <laughs> and then none of these people know it so it doesn't make any sense yeah it's just weird it yeah. forces you to be inauthentic that's yeah. why i don't I want so, somebody yeah. in the in the front okay so i go and i see them there and i'm like ah oh, fuck whatever i go do my set it's a lot of fun your crowds are great by the way and yeah, um cool I go back, you go up, you're killing, I'm talking to Alex, and then all of a sudden I see on the TV, which is reverse, there's a TV in the green room, which is reverse, he's talking to some people in the front, right? But the TV's reversed, so I think he's talking to people on the other side of the stage. I'm like, all right, phew, at least they're not my people. <laughs> and, uh, and, and then I see him asking for them to get kicked out. <laughs> and the club is kind of like reluctant a little bit, they're like warning, and then he's like, no, seriously, can you just kick them out already? And then finally... I walk outside and he's kicking out the director, his fiance, <laughs> the, the the two young stars of the movie. Like he's like, get the hell out of here! And the club doesn't know what to do because they're like, they're Schultz's friends. They like, wouldn't do it. So I was felt kind of weird. like, yeah, yeah, why is this? Well, I was basically what happened. Was, and you didn't know that. No, you didn't know. That. No, no clue. But it was like first they were like. They they kept yeah and then I was going hard on her calling her old and oh, I was going was, pretty yeah, and then I was yeah, going yeah, pretty yeah. aggressive and then I, I remember was like, being in the green room just going like woof <laughs> 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 I feel bad for that lady <laughs> I was going pretty hard yeah and then every time she was like kind of offended or whatever is and it the was fiance like, but everyone was on my side but like it wasn't that I was like oh this woman's arguing with me it was like you know when someone's like. Uh, causing a problem and then you do a whole interaction yeah. and then it's over and then they, they just, just keep on doing but they it, weren't even talking to me they were just the three of them would have a full conversation she's standing up like talking to the guy or whatever and i was yeah, just like who are just, these people why are you even here yeah it was so i just figured it was like the only th the shows are like sold out too so yeah. you're kind of like who is this even and yeah. also they're distracting everybody else watching the show even if they're Everyone not hated being it. loud yeah 100 percent and um, so after like 15 uh, minutes, yeah, you gave him a lot of time. It was just like, OK, en enough of it. I mean, I, I was more <laughs> like pretty surprised they haven't got yeah, rid of them. Yeah, even yeah, I was yeah. more like trying to play it cool. All right. Enough. And as they're walking out, <laughs> you're old, <laughs> you old lady, you old ass lady. It was crazy how many <laughs> old insults. She was around. probably like forty, but she was like, like I just, I just felt like that's what would bother her the most. Yeah. <laughs> You're old, You're old. That's what got me out of the green room. I was like, damn, how old is this bitch? Like, <laughs> called her old seven times, bro. So I felt so oh. bad. Oh god. And then she was with, it was like a weird, bizarre thing. Oh, I, would, I guess it's his friends, but it was like she was with a guy that I thought they were together, and the guy was like, looked like he was 17. And they were like oh, holding no, hands. That was or one of shit. the actors. And uh, I didn't know they were holding hands. That drama alert. No. And uh, <laughs> no, no. That was one of the actors. And then there's uh, another one of the actors that was there too. And they're all good kids. I mean, the actor is so embarrassed. He's a big stand up fan. Oh, really? Yeah. The dude seemed fine. Yeah. He seemed like he didn't like this whole thing going on. I think he felt really uncomfortable with the energy around him. Because I think okay. one of the actresses was kind of maybe offended by some of the stuff, right? As Hollywood type. That's what can she be. was. That's what happened. Yeah. Yeah. And it was, yeah. Apparently it was. I think that was one of the reasons she moved up. That's what the, someone on the cast that was a scab. Yeah, <laughs> Wait, they they told you. Well, because they came after when I was taking pictures with yeah, people, and yeah, like they, yeah. a lot of people of your of a lot of your people were like, "Yo, so sorry about her," like yeah, that they kind were of thing. Just embarrassed, and then yeah. he was like. Appar like there's two comics before Schultz and apparently she was getting all huffy during yeah. them and then she sort of stormed to the front because she was like oh she wanted to get in on the action yeah, <laughs> well she, she was did. yeah she's apparent or maybe she went up to see Schultz I don't know exactly but Ugh. she was like not happy but it's just funny because it was in fucking Calgary too yeah. so it's like Everyone there is like cowboys. They're the, I mean, yeah, they're like, say crazy or shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I was tame. Yeah. You can't offend a Calgarian. No, <laughs> oh, hell it no. Was so, I, and I don't want to, I don't want to out anybody because, you know, this is their job and shit like that. But like on the crew, 
the transport team, transport team are like the vans and shit that like take everybody around. It was all female transport team. So at first I'm like, is this some like woke Canadian shit where they're like trying to take traditional male jobs and give them to women <laughs> to see if it's like to like prove that their women can do anything women or whatever. Can transport actors, <laughs> bro. This is what I'm thinking for about five minutes in the car, right? I don't know how we got into it, but the lady about six minutes goes, you know, there's Chinese police stations in Toronto. <laughs> I go, what? I go, hold on. This is kind of interesting. He goes, yeah, there's Chinese police stations all over and the Canadian government's not doing anything about it. I go, I go, just out of curiosity, are you vaccinated? She goes, that's my business. I don't have to share it with anybody. I go, I'm going to love this transport team. <laughs> <laughs> and what I found it is all the transport chicks are these ranchers yeah. that are bored. So they all own ranches. Ah. They raise bison and fucking bull and, the cowboys. and uh, horses. They are cowgirls. Yeah, cowboys. Cowgirls, yeah. And they just are 70 and their husbands are dead because they've been ranching yeah. their whole life. So they're like, fuck it. I'll just drive Hollywood folks yeah. around. And it was amazing. Every single got time I got into the tr uh, to the transport thing. I don't want to say this girl's name. I don't want to get her fired. But I was just going further and further with what the conspiracies yeah, yeah, yeah. were. Like, I was this close to being like, You're like Who's? white what people get think? pretty fair treatment in this country, right? <laughs> <laughs> what do you think of the uh, CBC? You like them? Like, yeah. see, they're like very the natives. Fair. Did anything bad happen to the natives out here? <laughs> that Trudeau guy's doing a good job, huh? <laughs> hate Trudeau. Oh, I hate him. Yeah. Anyway. Did so. you hear about on like after on the set with this whole debacle? Oh, they were like, all they, just mortified. Like, they yeah, just mortified. it was coming they, up. They just felt so bad. Everybody was a little sauce. Not like it's an excuse, but they're yeah. They're that's mortified. always what it is. Yeah. And then I apologized profusely to Ryan, which and, I didn't give a shit. Yeah, no, obviously. you didn't. But then you immediately asked me to come on the podcast. So I thought that, that was really good timing. <laughs> and and I can't a, say no. Month and a half. Never let a crisis go to waste. Never let a crisis go to waste. That's an age old. <laughs> but that was fun, man. You had great stuff. Great stuff, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Outside of that debacle, it was really those shows were fun. <laughs> no, the, the candidates have been like so sick, and there's like they sell out like all of them. I'm like yeah. super pumped about it. You know what's weird is, I mean, whatever. Would like the, who cares? But like, it's interest. It's interesting that I do better there because it isn't, and it isn't because I've like more push or whatever. It's just because I like connect to Canadians more because my humor is more Canadian. Really? Yeah. Do yeah. you think all that it is. your stand up? You think you all kill of harder there? Yeah, all of it. Interesting. Yeah, I mean the podcast. Yeah. I mean, we're just like very satirical. It's a little British. Like it's just the the type of comedy I do is it's connects with like Canadians and British people more. It's like big audiences in London, big and Really? Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's interesting. I thought cuz this happens sometimes like when you come from another country and you make it in America, Sometimes your mother country shows a little bit more love. Yeah, but oh, a lot of true, times they don't sure. even know I'm Canadian. You'll go to these places. Yeah, that's you know? the weirdest thing. Well, that's kind of the point I was trying to make. Yeah. Where yeah. it's like, where it's like, oh, they think that here's this American guy who's killing it, and he's like he's us. coming back to Canada. <laughs> and he, and I kind of relate to him. Yeah, Dude, I honestly feel like you're like, like a white NBA player. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? We're like, he looks like me. I like him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's like the whole this representation stuff. You go, I I could do that, <laughs> yeah, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Dude, whenever I meet people like at shows, it reminds me of like meeting like my it reminds me of meeting like a brother's buddy or like a guy you, a younger guy you worked with that's like they're not like, oh my god, they're like, yo, you're killing it, bro. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like they're like they talk like it's it's literally like you met like your brother's it's friend who's like sculpt better, for you. It's a way better relationship. <laughs> I feel like I have that also with the people who've been supporting me, where like if they see me on the street, they just go, Schultz! And yeah, 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 yeah. Chelsea, yo, can I get a pic, Chelsea? Like everybody acts like they know me because they do probably know me better than some of my friends in terms but of, but not in a way that they're like fangirl. Like, yeah, they're just yeah, like, yeah. they just listen to you talk for five hours. Exactly. Week, whereas so, like your friends don't do that. Yes, exactly. <laughs> like, I don't think any of my friends listen to my podcast. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They don't. My no, actual no, friends, no, no, none of like, them listen to my podcast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, hey, I have a theory that I feel like you have. A, but I feel like that all of the biggest comedians right now are a mix of like edgy and urban. It's like, if you think about it, like put Theo in that thing, maybe not always edgy, but like Trevor Wallace. It's like, yeah. it's like, like all the white guys that are like a little like that yeah. is the biggest guys right now because it kind that's, of can connect to all of the different things. Yeah, that's interesting. I mean, I was super lucky in that like, I kind of, black people knew about me before white people did. Yeah, I know. Because I came up with like Guy Code and Charlemagne. I knew you as like that kind of world. Yeah. yeah. So it's like, and I think that's an easier transition. I think that 
the urban audiences are more skeptical. I don't think it happens. You just don't, you just yeah. don't do that transition. It, 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 like like Jim Carrey, <laughs> yeah. right? He's not exactly. <laughs> but no, but Jim Carrey was on uh, what's it called? Living first. Color. Yeah, Living color, color first. So black people are like, oh, that white dude's funny. Uh -huh. And then he transitions. Yeah, and yeah. then black dudes were like, oh yeah, that's our white that's our white boy. So it wasn't a big thing to get it over, and they love the movies, et cetera. So I think that I mean, it worked out. I was lucky for me. It also wasn't like this big transition because I grew up in New York. Like no, black people weren't like a Toronto foreign stuff. thing. Yeah, 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 you grow up in a yeah. diverse city. It's not like a foreign thing for you, especially you come up doing stand up. You're going to do the black rooms or the hood rooms, <laughs> is what we called them. And, um, but yeah, I can see how that's much easier for people to consume later on. There's not like a skepticism. It's not like, why are they pushing this white boy on us? It's like, oh no, that was our guy. And then he got successful. That's fire that we knew about him before everybody Culture ra rarely goes like white people to black people. Although, yeah. it, in the latest year- Oh, but now it is. It is, a, I, t I it's say- It's not even white, it's like gay is what's cool. Yeah. Like gay is the new black in terms of like, it's dictating culture, right? Not like, intended. No, for real, yeah. for real though, right? Like, I, I'm like, I think about this, we were talking about this on- uh, <laughs> You think, what, what do you think gay stuff's dictating? I mean everything. Like you see these dudes like with their nails painted. Fashion. But that's rock and roll stuff. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, y'all were trying to be gay. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. It's, Back in the day, rock and roll dudes were trying to be yeah, gay. Yeah, like the androgynous stuff or whatever. Like it's not. It's not they're trying to be gay. It's like how can I reject whatever is going on? What is the greatest pretty, rejection yeah. of masculinity? Homosexuality, right? In people's minds, at least at the time. Like, how can I push back? How but can I make my dad upset? But it only worked when it was on, like, a pussy crusher. Like, it didn't work that good when it was, like... A fat it, guy with tits. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's yeah, too yeah, believable. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. What the fuck's going on over here? Yeah, I hear you. But that's what we do. We just reject, right? Like, I mean, that's the whole cycle of fashion. I mean, I mean it's all so the, funny. Dude. All the, like, Lil Wayne yeah. and stuff like that started skateboarding. I remember that was, like, a moment where I was yeah. like, this is the first time where I've seen, like, black dudes start to dress like white dudes. Was that the yeah. first time you felt your culture was being appropriated? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. A little bit. yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> No, He's but like I, playing the guitar backwards. <laughs> I respect it. It's like that's how I don't know. I guess that's like the cycle of coolness, right? It's like something is cool because it is uncool, right? A cool thing can't be mainstream. It becomes mainstream, and then you have to do the uncool thing again. You have to reject that mainstream thing. So we yeah. see it happen with clothing, right? It's like yeah. skinny jeans were not cool. No dude would wear skinny jeans. That's gay if you wear skinny jeans. And then all of a sudden, enough people who wanted to be cool and stand out started wearing skinny jeans then it becomes mainstream zara sells it and now baggy jeans are the new cool thing yeah, because yeah. this is the most uncool thing you could do fashion's so cyclical same thing with everything i love the i have buddies that like from music that like wore skinny jeans from the first time it was cool that's like my favorite thing and they just haven't left <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah 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 they, yeah, they yeah. like it came back in style and they're like this guy's like a trendsetter you're like yeah, yeah 40 years ago he started. <laughs> yeah 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 yeah, yeah. Uh, there's a book about that what is it uh I don't know. I don't know who, who wrote that fucking Tipping book? Point? Is it Tipping Point? Not one point? of the Malcolm Gladwell it ones about be. Airwalk and stuff? It might be. About yeah. how like there's different there's different groups of people that can influence culture. And they're like the people they're like the people that are doing it authentically by themselves, then the people kind of see that and bring that to the somewhat subculture and then the big brands basically look at those people and go now nah, we're gonna make this mainstream yeah, yeah. wasn't well, that the whole thing where like tommy hilfiger was like promoting like theft like when it was starting to pop off in the <laughs> 90s hilarious. they were like literally like let black people steal this but like all the stuff because we just want them to wear it yeah and like he like specifically <laughs> said he said that like he tommy hilfiger actually said that they they say he also said other things about i'm sure yeah. <laughs> yeah, i'm not defending tommy hilfiger I'm just it wasn't point. originally an f in that title <laughs> <laughs> yeah how can you be cool doing the mainstream thing that's yeah. the trick like i think that's where alt comedy comes from yeah definitely yeah. you know it's like comedy and i think that's the only like criticism you can really have on all comedy is like comedy needs to be ubiquitous for all comedy to work so it's like comedy you know comedians we make fun of institutions sometimes comedy becomes an institution so then comedians can make fun of that institution but comedy needs to be that popular in order to satirize it yeah if you're yeah, satirizing yeah. somebody nobody knows no nobody's then, gonna fucking and get then the it. thing right. that's being said that's like i yeah, mean some good. people might not care but like it re that it is like the thing that becomes that's satirizing it then becomes the mainstream which is what happened to tim and eric and stuff well all comedy became mainstream <laughs> yeah but that's you're like all these people are like so i funny. do alt comedy you're like you're like you're, doing the, mainstream comedy. you're in the biggest movie in the world right <laughs> yeah. now what are you talking yeah. about yeah alternative, alternative to alternative, what yeah alternative to what <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah exactly yeah. you're not in calgary <laughs> shooting <laughs> indies exactly yeah it's a um it's a weird thing that happens with yeah it's a weird thing that happens with comedy you want the unique take I guess but it's everything you're right which yeah. i guess they've 
we should pour one out for the goat, Jerry Springer, who just died. Yeah. But like, he was the original guy that was doing like kind of what's on the internet right now, a little bit where it's like, hey, let's have like people that are smarter, like, hey, let's get a white supremacist and a fucking black guy <laughs> to like argue or whatever. Yeah. Like, he was the. Him and like Morton yeah. Downey Jr. You ever see Morton Downey Jr.? No. Dude, he was the. The, the craziest. He would have the most insane. I think he was like a, right around the same time. He was like smoking. He like he, you've seen him before. He like this gravelly voice and just yeah. yelling. And he'd have like he was the first guy to have like trans people on and stuff. And yeah. then but yeah, those two guys were. But Jerry was the first guy to just have people beating each other with. Yeah, him. that was the best. What was the <laughs> yeah? He used to have so many fights. That's how Steve Wilkos got his own. Yeah, show. Steve Wilkos has his own show just from the. And he was the security guard. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he was just a security guard. Do you remember? Do you like Wilkos? I never watched Wilco's show, but I watched Jerry for sure. Jerry, Jerry. Dude. Also, what they were fighting about was quite reasonable. <laughs> Dude, like, it wasn't irrational to fight about those uh -huh. things. Like, I thought I was raising my kid, but I wasn't. Yeah. And it was really this guy's kid the whole time. I'm no, that, fuck that guy up. Like, some of those were fake, though. Remember that scandal? All of them. Do you know Leah Janine? No, what's that? Ali you know Leah Janine. She's a comic in New York, but no, um, maybe she, I do. Maybe, whatever, but yeah. she was on one of the episodes. There was comics that were like there were a bunch of Canadian comics who went on. They did that, uh, but they, it was mixed because some of them were real and some of them were fake. It yeah. was like a I mix. think with Jerry Springer too is they knew, but they go like this the is story's well, good. Story's and they good. Can act we'll it out. just turn a blind eye to this. A lot yeah. of wink, that. wink. This yeah. is totally real. Go ahead. Yeah. And they're like just let it go. Yeah. That's what it is. Yeah, Dick yeah. Masterson, I think, had a bit of like that. Like he was doing like a character yeah. who did his thing. Who's that? This he he did like a he did this character. I can't remember the I guess it was Dick Masterson, but he did a character on uh it wasn't it was Jerry Phil, right? I think it was Dr. Phil where he was like, women belong in the kitchen and uh, all this stuff. And he was like joking, you know what I mean? But they bring him on as a real guy. <laughs> it's almost like kayfabe. He said they kind of knew. Wrestling like. uh, I mean, I thought the the most fire guest on Dr. Phil was um, the dude who started bum fights. Apparently that guy's like has some big company now. Like okay. bum fights guys been killing it. So bum fights was this dude. He would just videotape bums fighting each other. I think they would like pay them to fight each other. He'd videotape and put them up. This is like early YouTube remember, days. Yeah, oh, yeah. you remember? Okay, oh, okay. I used to have like actual videos. He yeah. did one of the fights. Yeah. <laughs> So that was the guy on the outside being like, fight, fight, fight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So basically he goes on Dr. Phil and Dr. Phil is acting like he's going to, you know, punish this dude, at least emotionally for what he's doing. He's <laughs> taking advantage of these mentally ill people and profiting off of them. And the dude dresses up as Dr. Phil. <laughs> <laughs> And he's like, this That's is what code. you do. You exploit mentally ill people and profit off of it. No. Yeah. He's like, we're doing the same thing. Like, how can you criticize me? Everybody on your Ooh. show has suffered from mental illness. Legends. And he's a fucking legend for that. I was like, that is done. Hands Bum down. Bum fights guy rules. I wonder if Dr. Phil was like, I don't want to release this. And they're like, Wait. why would he? Yeah. Like, why? what an idiot. Yeah. You're like, scrap you, the you, episode. You, you probably are filming like eight episodes a day. Yeah. In this shit. Like, yeah. Why do you release that? Dude, think how hard it is to do back-to-back <laughs> -back podcasts. And they would do back-to-back, -back, it's not your father's. <laughs> <laughs> like, that is emotionally draining. Oh, he's checked out. He's yeah. probably, like, just in his mind thinking about, like, a boat he wants to buy. And... <laughs> but still to be somewhat locked in, we're, like, listening to these <laughs> gut-wrenching stories. Like, I talk about the Bud Light trans shit for an hour, and I'm like, I don't know if I could do a Patreon today, guys. Like, <laughs> that was exhausting emotionally for me. And I'm drunk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there was Steve Wilkos show my favorite part about it was because his whole thing was kicking people out right yeah and it's like sort of he got popular but it's it was like well, it's almost like that was his where he got his start yeah. so most of his show was you would argue with people and he'd be like you're not even a man and the guy would be like fuck you and he goes you know what get off my stage yeah. so like every show he'd kick off 30 percent. wait of did the he guests. have his <laughs> own bouncer or was he like I do it too I think he was I think he was uh, moonlighting on his own show <laughs> I mean, that is what a security guard would do yeah. with his show, right? Like, show, he would yeah. just remove somebody from the venue. <laughs> he, would, he would kick off every guest on the show. It was, like, so funny. Like, he would have episodes where he kicked off every guest. And then they're just sitting there talking about their feelings. <laughs> like, yeah. Catch Me Outside Girl when it got kicked the fuck <laughs> off. Of the <laughs> She's done all right for herself, bad baby. She's amazing. Oh, she killed it. Yeah. I'll say one thing that, that when I think of kind of that era of 90s where like Howard Stern would have the, you know, KKK guy on and they'd roast him. Like to me, like if you actually 
think about it, I think that that made KKK less cool than like, like if you're the type of person that was like thinking about becoming like a KKK member, yeah. saying like, these guys are evil, they're the worst, doesn't make it less appealing to that guy. Hmm. What makes it, especially if you know them, you know what yeah. I mean? It just makes them like, oh, like especially once they tell one lie about them, now you go, oh, are they lying about them? Whereas like, goofing on them made them less cool like uh, no one watched like that guy the roast and be like i want to be in the kkk yeah. yeah or like when they're you know i think so i think it almost like made it less cool like whereas making them like oh you're bad if you're part of them you're, you're like if you be... watch them on 60 minutes it's not as the same as if you like see them on just getting do you, do you yeah think, do you i think, think the kkk is jealous of the police <laughs> Because like they're getting all, all the, the credit hate. for yeah. killing the black people, yeah. and like nobody's talking about the KKK anymore. You know what I mean? Like they like, had their the day. They were the OGs. Yeah. Yeah. But a newer, more uh, you know, potent it. version <laughs> has come around. <laughs> they're the, called the police. Are they mad about it? Yeah. <laughs> well, I used to. I, I was like always loved the idea that the other side that was like the when everyone was getting called racist, the like recruiter for the KKK was like, yeah. oh, this is gonna be easy. Yeah, yeah, and then he like yeah, yeah. he brings the guy. It's like this guy has 20 articles about how he's racist and the yeah. guy's like no yeah. i'm not racist and he's like i swear he's they're like he's trying to pitch him to the, the leader he's like what do they do the kkk i'm like i don't understand it now oh uh, i don't know i bet you like the actual membership is pretty like the real membership of the kkk in america is i bet you it's really low. honest yeah. to god if i was to guess like they have like podcasts, <laughs> but like, don't. what is their goal? Like, they want black people to go back to Africa. Like, what is their goal? I what think do they're they want? equally as focused on Jews and yeah. Jews. There's probably a lot of like newer groups that push those out, but like the actual KKK, I bet you is probably not that popping. Like, I picture it's awkward. Like, <laughs> they give up on black people. <laughs> <laughs> Did they do? The, have they pivoted? Like, okay, that one's we got to pivot, guys. Yeah. It's not worth it. <laughs> They got like a. It's a, like the Republican Party with abortion. They're like, I think people want abortion. Let's move to someone else. Trans issues. Like, <laughs> if they gave up on black people, bro. Oh, pathetic. I don't think. I honestly think they're having like a bit of an identity crisis. They really don't know like what they are. Because yeah. there's all these like even hard, more hardcore racist groups, you know, I feel like that, are, that look down on the KKK. Kind, I think they're kind of. These guys just are like, soft. Yeah, they're <laughs> yeah, just yeah, like, yeah, you yeah, guys yeah. are like the old yeah. hat. Take like, off the hoods, you <laughs> pussy. Yeah, exactly. You know? <laughs> Show your face. Hide in your identity. This guy's like, yeah. But I work at Whataburger. <laughs> I'm a police officer. I can't. Dude, yeah, it just feels like so embarrassing. I just, yeah, there's got to be like. Outside of it being racist, like even amongst racists, it feels embarrassing. But that's what I mean. If, if you were like thinking of, you know, getting into that game, yeah. I think that watching them get clowned on makes it less appealing than people calling it <laughs> also, bad. Also, what if you were racist and you just, you couldn't make the cut? Like. What you if are, they vetted you and they're like, yeah, not yeah, enough? Not you're like, no, trust me. <laughs> I fucking I, hate them, dude. Yeah. Like, yeah. They're destroying the neighborhoods. You do not want to see me when an Asian cuts me off. I <laughs> promise you that. <laughs> you do no, not. How do you prove it? If there was a GoPro <laughs> in my car, I swear to God. I, I think he's a... faking it, dude. Yeah. I think he's faking Plus, it. with all the gotcha stuff on YouTube and like all the everybody's like making these videos, you just you never know who's there for the wrong reasons. It's oh, like, yeah. You have to really vet people because they actually could be there. It's all vice journalists. That's all. Yeah, yeah. Like a cake. KKK meeting is just like wow. 50 purple haired people with a fucking <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. hood on. <laughs> Remember in Blazing Saddles? Remember in Blazing Saddles? I don't know if you ever seen it. No. But, oh, when they, they go, uh, like uh, the black guy and the white guy, they try to go to like a KKK meeting, and then but you can see his hands, whatever, oh. and they're black. He goes, oh, it's just dirt. And then he flips it over. See, it's coming off. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's yeah. <laughs> amazing. Ah, that's good shit. It's amazing. Oh. Yeah, definitely awkward meetings where they're. I think I feel I picture them like arguing over like who made the potato salad and stuff like that. Yeah. Like Tom, we're supposed to have lunch at four o'clock. You know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know who would have made a good potato salad? Don't mention it. <laughs> <laughs> don't let them do that anymore. <laughs> ah, shit. The goat, Jerry Springer, R.I.P. Uh, Gonna take a quick second here to tell the people, our people, the peeps, the peeps about Babel. We've been telling you. People have been trashing me in the ads, yeah, actually. <laughs> a, a very popular uh, refrain is, Ryan, have you considered getting Babel for English? <laughs> Maybe you got an upcoming summer trip ahead. You know, the go-to travel hack is Babel. Whether you're a seasoned traveler, you're embarking on your first-time adventure, communication is key to fully experiencing a new culture. That's where Babel comes in. Babel's the language learning app that's sold more than 10 million subscriptions. 
You know how many that many is? 10 million. And they're not inflating the numbers no. either. Thanks to Babbel's addictively fun and easy bite-sized language lessons, there's time to learn new languages before you reach your destination. You're out there in France. You're trying to talk to these, you know, you're trying to talk you to go, these ladies. Bonjour. Yeah. That's that you, what you say. You go, bonjour. Well, you're going to be saying a lot more than that, and you're going to be doing a lot more mm, than that because yeah. you got the you got the skills to pay the bills mm -hmm. with Babel. You're out here talking to these ladies. They don't see you like the stupid American idiot. I mean, they think that, but the, they don't they, say they, that. I'll tell you where they can think that from. Your date. <laughs> With Babbel, you only need 10 minutes to complete a lesson so you can start having real-life conversations in as little as three weeks. Babbel's expertly crafted lessons are built around real life. You learn how to have practical conversations about travel, relationships, business, and more. They got the bases covered. Other learning language apps use AI for their lessons plans. Babbel's not about that life. Their lessons are created by over 150 language experts and voiced by real native speakers, not computers. Their teaching method has been scientifically proven to be effective. And with Babbel, you can choose from 14 different languages. So they're not messing around. Plus, Babbel's speech recognition technology helps you improve your pronunciation and your accent. There's so many ways to learn with Babbel. In addition to lessons, you can access podcasts, games, video stories, and even live classes. Plus, it comes with a 20-day money-back guarantee. Start your language learning journey today with Babbel. So, right now... And this is the big this is the big one. You get to 55% off your subscription when you go to babbel.com slash boyscast. Babbel.com slash boyscast for up to 55% off your subscription. Babbel, language for life. Can take another quick second here to tell the fellas again about Butcher Box. Oh, I've been smashing the box. The boys love boxes. The boys love the butcher box. Boys love meat. Boys love boxes. Boys love meat in boxes. <laughs> you know what I mean. This I'm talking about meat. The boys love meat. The boys love boxes. <laughs> what do we like? We like meat and we like our meat. We don't just like any meat. Yeah. We like meat that we've purchased in boxes that comes delivered to your door. Delicious. Butcher box. Anything you made recently? Steak yesterday. Oh, you feel good about yourself. Yeah, I do. It's a big boy. It's a big boy with a big steak. <laughs> <laughs> with some big meat. Big boy with some big meat. It's easily to find high quality meats and seafood you can trust. 100% grass fed beef, free range organic chicken, pork raised, crate free, and wild caught seafood. Humanely raised, no antibiotics, no added hormones. Delivered right to your doorstep. Free shipping, as always. Curated to customized box plans. They got a variety of high quality cuts and amazing value. Exclusive member deals, recipe inspiration, guides, tips, hacks. Hacks. Yeah, life no. hacks, cooking hacks. Cooking hacks, now we're talking. So you're not sitting there. I mean, you like to cook naked in an apron. Yeah, I'm more yeah. of a clothed Yeah, cooker. they're just like, yeah, if you don't want those burns all over your body, <laughs> maybe toss a shirt on, you fat slob. <laughs> They give you Thanks, a, Butcher Box. They give you a disposal, uh, how to dispose of the grease as you just ate it. Yeah. <laughs> I go, wait, I'm not supposed to drink the grease? <laughs> Quality ingredients. You impress the people when they come over. They say, I didn't know I was di dining at a king's house yeah. with these kind of cuts. It's a five-star barbecue. Yeah. You can have it at your own house. So you get free chicken, thighs for a year, and $20 off your first box when you sign up today. That's three pounds of bone-in chicken thighs free in every box for a year, plus $20 off your first order when you sign up at ButcherBox.com, so they're also not messing around. Use the code BOYSCAST. That's ButcherBox.com slash BOYSCAST, and use the code BOYSCAST. Claim this deal, ButcherBox.com slash BOYSCAST, with the code BOYSCAST. R.I.P. Uh, and R.I.P., as some of you already heard, R.I.P. Tucker Carlson, Don Lemon. So yeah. Don Lemon. And I was thinking the best scandals of those two. Uh, and then also, I feel like you probably have a good take on like what's actually happening. I don't know. I, I've been thinking about this a lot. I got to know where they are in their contracts. Oh. Don Lemon, they still owe him, See, I, I know think, he $25 this, million. Probably. Yeah. It's still, okay, so I'll tell you a weird thing they about got the CNN. Same lawyer, yeah. So I, I will brilliant. generally like just, you know, just... I'll see what's going on on Fox and CNN. They're, yeah. they're like beside each other. And I turned CNN on uh, two nights ago and they're kind of getting like normal again. I think yeah. they're being like this whole super left thing. Trump like nonstop. What were they yeah. saying? Dude, they had Matt Gates on. Yeah. Like I was like, am I having the same a guy? They call the pedophile, right? Yeah. The same dude who they're like, they're, this is the worst guy on earth. Pedophile, yeah. like groomer, all this stuff. And they're yeah. like, they just bring him on. Now. Yeah. 
I like I couldn't believe it that yeah. he was on the show. I think they're like, yeah, this because they have a new guy in who's running the show. Yeah, the new guy and the new guys just stuff. like the new guys just like, yeah, we're not the far left like MSNBC. We want to be like more to the middle. Yeah, and. So they're just, yeah, they're acting like, I guess, how they used to be, I, I guess. I mean, there's but, a spot wide open in the middle. And basically what they'll do is they'll just get rid of all the guys who are representative of the far left. Yeah. So, so they're Don's so And those guys are probably making too much money anyway. Like, anyone who's been there for 15 years yeah. is overpaid. Oh, yeah. yeah. Don Lemon's probably making 10 mil a year. So that's the thing. It's like, you got to look at these guys as system quarterbacks, right? So okay. we think of, like, Tucker, right? Or no, who was the guy that was uh, like Fox's biggest dude? Maybe Bill Riley. Bill, Bill Riley. Riley. Yeah. Everybody thought when Bill left Fox that like he could go create his own thing. He doesn't need Fox News. He's the biggest name. He's in not news. creating anything. He's doing a <laughs> podcast. He's writing a fourth book about Ben Franklin or something. Yeah, like yeah. That. Like, I don't he's know doing what he nothing. You don't even know where the tweets. fuck he is. I've seen a few tweets of him tweeting like, "Hey, I'm interviewing this guy today." Nobody and it's cares. Like yeah. Ten likes. Exactly. And, uh, <laughs> Glenn, Glenn Beck did go, but he's like he went and started the Blaze. He was but the, Glenn maybe that. was more um, but, industrious. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, Tucker Carlson's yeah. tapped into the internet stuff too. A hundred percent. So maybe he could do it. Uh, but even the blaze, the blaze was its most popular when Tommy Lauren was just aggravating yeah, black people for sure. every single day. Like yeah, yeah. that was her way of getting news, right? Piss off black people. And then in the same way that like musicians piss off religious folks for clicks. Yeah. Like that's the new thing. Like every, everybody <laughs> is into the devil lately. Doja Cat is like, I love the devil. And then Sam Smith is, I love the devil. And then Lil Uzi Vert is, I love the devil. And then Christians go, oh, they love the devil. Yeah. And then everybody listens to her music. It's almost making it cool. Like, like it, the, the truth was like, there was a while where like, like even in comedy, we're like making fun of religions like hack because you're like fighting a thing that so, doesn't exist. I like justifying it. Yeah, well, no, sure. I yeah. like justifying every religion. Yeah, yeah, it goes the other every way. single one. But Please, now it yeah. is like it's like I, I guess uh, it, it like people are getting mad again, so they're almost like proving them right. Like you know what I mean? Like the, I guess I mean religious folks are always going to get upset, but to me, I just think it's like the easiest thing to. Oh, is there a five thousand year old scripture <laughs> that has some mistakes in it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, oh, there's a argument? man in the sky. Yeah, like, <laughs> Bill Maher. Is that I mean, your like, the, like the first man in this, like Carlin, when they're like man in the sky, and everybody's like, oh, interesting. And then you're like the four thousandth comedian who's like man in the sky. That's crazy. And you're like, all right, yeah, whatever. It doesn't matter. But uh, wait, what? Were no, it becomes uh, the airline. What's the yeah, one that everyone makes jumps. fun of right now? What is it? Spirit? Is it Spirit? Yeah, uh, I think Southwest it's Spirit. Yeah, like that. It's, yeah, it becomes that. You know what I mean? You're yeah. like uh, the hot take that Spirit stinks. You're like <laughs> it's been covered. But no, what we're talking about was the Tucker. Thing, right so i think what happens is like when you're everybody exists in their own bubble right everybody thinks that they're the hottest shit right and uh the reality is most people don't care about anybody right there's a few people that the whole world is like that person's well-being is very important to us so i assume tucker is he has the highest rated show on the highest rated news show in the country right everybody's talking to him he's pissing people off and he's also a hero to those that support what he's saying so I think in his mind, he's like, I'm the biggest thing out here. They need me. And why wouldn't he think that? He gets rewarded. Those feelings get validated every single day. <laughs> going so, viral nonstop. Nonstop. And every single day there are people going, yo, thank you for championing my beliefs. You're a fucking hero. You should be present. That's all he's being told. Yeah. Right? And the people who hate him, he thinks are idiots. So he doesn't care what they think anyway. Right? And they're so, necessary for him to keep getting bigger probably. Probably. 100%. Yeah. No, no, for sure. So I'm sure he's going... Okay, I could make four million a year here, five million a year, whatever. Or I could just start my own podcast and probably make more than that. I'm Tucker Carlson. I'm the biggest name in news. So I can make more money not being a part of this system, or the Daily Wire is going to throw me a crazy bag. Rumble. And I just have my show right there. I go on Rumble, whatever the fuck it is. So I'm sure he's like, I don't need Fox News. What he will most likely find out, actually, we'll see. We'll see how industrious he is. But not everybody's built for the business side of this shit. Ben yeah. Shapiro and the people that do especially the, Daily the Wire. lifetime journalist guys, yeah, hundred percent. People are saying he might run for president. I've heard that too. Let's see, let's see what happens. I mean, he understands media, and that's really important to be present. I guess what I'm saying is like, I think these people, even Don Lemon, I think is going. I'm the man. Like I'm Don Lemon. Like I'm. He struts news. around New York like yeah. the man. Yeah, <laughs> but they will soon find out that they were probably system quarterbacks, and they can also find out that they were Tom Brady if they go somewhere else and have the same success without the system. Then you know you're Tom Brady. If you go somewhere else and you just fall into obscurity like Bill O'Reilly, then you know you're a system quarterback. Fox goes, we're a system. We could put most people in that nine o'clock slot and it's gonna do well. Yeah. And CNN probably feels the exact same way. It's almost like SNL, right? It's like not to say there aren't incredibly talented people there, but SNL is an institution and it's gonna be there whether or not Jay Farrell's on the show 
You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. They, they're not going, oh, my God, SNL is going to crumble if Jay wants to go and do movies and continue, you know, with his career. Uh huh. So I think that's where the news corporations are going. Like, we don't really need you. And if we're trying to rebrand because we don't want to do that extreme left shit, we need to get Anderson out of here. We need to get Don Lemon out of here. Yeah. And if Fox is like, yo, we're running with Trump this time and we're not going to put this guy on who's talked some shit about Trump, said he doesn't like Trump, we got to get that motherfucker out of here. It could be the best of both yeah. worlds. Yeah, yeah, Don Lemon, I think, I don't know where he's going to, because he's not going to be like a podcast. He's he's not going to go do shit himself. He's done, right? He I got, mean, he has $30 million. Or but he could go to, to like a up. real, he could go to just get another gig like that. He's like, oh, yeah, I go to a morning show now. He'll yeah. be on The yeah. View or something. The problem yeah. is, is those yeah. guys go to, what, uh, what's Cuomo on right now? It's not Newsmax. Apparently but, he's making money, though. It's something like that. But it's like he gets as many views on his show as like just like podcasts. Yeah. You're like, you went from like this. Remember on CNN, him and Don Lemon during COVID? And yeah. they were like, it's the biggest thing on in the world. And now yeah. he's just like, I'm on this like shitty channel that's like basically a podcast. And yeah. I don't know. I don't know if Don Lemon has like the can take that ego hit. That's the power of podcasting, though. It's like we're doing more views than a lot of these news organizations. Yeah. It's crazy. Most of them. It's crazy. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. It's wild. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's crazy to see podcasting in like TV and film now. That's what's crazy. Like it's a job in TV and film. What do you mean? Like to me, that's how you know it became mainstream. When the people that are in the TV shows, like Carrie. Oh, she's a in Sex in the City has a podcast. I hate the way that they present podcasting of, in movies. Drives me nuts. Of the course. Justin, the Justin Long one. I was just like, uh, made me want to punch my TV. I didn't see that one. <laughs> Why was he? Justin well, they, Long still because doing they anything? can't make po- like all of the biggest podcasters yeah. are something that they refuse to. So they don't. Oh, the, the murder podcast guys, that's real. So they yeah. they make the murder podcast, but but what they do is they make him an NPR guy. Uh, so they make him this famous podcaster that's like. You know, and how are you doing? It's like yeah, yeah. no one listens to those podcasts, yeah, 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 and they yeah. they like they're creating like an alternate world where like a different podcast is well, more popular. That, well, the production company that makes that movie owns the podcast. Like they own a similar pod. It's yeah. probably all like some giant. But it's like a fake uh, trope. So they're always trying to just promote their own. It's stuff. like making a hockey yeah. team, and they're all gay. And it was like, okay, but well, that's not what. <laughs> Ryan, it looks they like. are all gay. <laughs> I watch Hockey Night in Canada. I can confirm they are all gay now. <laughs> I just like hate that shit when like they yeah. make a movie about like a culture you know, and it's kind of a, always music docs like. Like some do it or music movies some do it good some are like just crazy corny yeah where they like i'll tell you where music does it and i'm sure that maybe you feel this way about like hip-hop stuff but they'll make like a rock and roll guy yeah. well after there was a, any rock and roll guys <laughs> yeah, 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 like you know yeah. what i mean they'll have a guy they'll that was, the, yeah 2004 yeah and you're like <laughs> no there is no rock and roll yeah. band unless they were like a, a throwback like you know what i mean yeah so they have this guy that was like let's get ready to rock and he's like so famous and you go okay but that doesn't exist in the real world right so what are we what are we what is this yeah is this like an alternate universe yeah well, mm-hmm. I, I don't, I don't is know, that like your it. music rock <laughs> are you are you big like rock and roll pop, no i was pop, dead punk. when i was one huh? pop punk no <laughs> Who do you listen to? Simple play. I was like, my big things growing up was like punk and rap. So like yeah. my favorite bands were like Rancid, Rage Against the Machine, Beastie yeah. Boys. Yeah. And then like, and then then after that, I kind of got into like all the. How you old know, are you? Uh, Thirty seven. Thirty seven. Okay, so you didn't get caught up in like Guns and Roses or Metallica. No, I, that was way before me. Like when I was in el- elementary school. I'm thirty nine. That's all I was. Yeah, listening I, like, to. I was. What? Yeah, Guns and Roses. Nirvana. Yeah. Yeah. Guns and Nirvana. Roses. Metallica. Yeah. Guns, Guns and Roses was like Use Your Illusion one and two. That oh was like yeah. Right before Nirvana. I bought Appetite for Destruction yeah. at a CD okay. store. When I was yeah. in grade. Like five, yeah, three eleven, and raging as machine were coming on the scene, and they were pretty cool. Rage, I remember, but it never really like uh, took hold in New York. We like the machine. No, yeah, <laughs> big New machine. Yorkers are big really machine big town. machine town. Yeah, that's the thing about New York. I think a lot of people don't get. It's like <laughs> it's not re- like everybody. Oh, it's liberal, whatever, like that. Yeah, it's liberal about everything except like money. This is just a money town. Yeah. It, it, money moves shit here. And I, you can see it in across all cultures, music, it doesn't matter. It's like, that's why nobody really hates the finance bros. You know what I mean? Like They were they had their moment where crypto bro was like a slur. The crypto bro, finance <laughs> crypto bro. was a different thing, though. It's all okay. shit. And like you hear girls going like, I don't want to date another finance guy. And it's like, you're going to marry them. Like, <laughs> you're all going to marry them. Like, shut the hell up. You know what Morgan Stanley is. You know what JP Morgan you're is. You're in the game. You know what the fucking hedge funds are. You know every single one. So you are going to marry them. But yeah, I think New York likes it. We have every reason. Like, if we really wanted to have like animosity for a group of people in New York, it would be the hedge funds. Yeah. And they're right there. But every New Yorker's like, nah, I'd be fired to work at a hedge fund. I know <laughs> yeah. it sounds crazy for us because we're in the exact opposite. Keeping the strip profession. clubs afloat. <laughs> oh, hell 
yeah. They really are good people. <laughs> Dude, oh, they man. really are good people. That's my, like, half of, yeah, part of my fucking. Those, ex- sure. those expense accounts they have where yeah. they just, they're like literally just like, yeah, they uh, wrote off like an eight ball of Coke and you're yeah. like, you could do that? Yeah, it's like every steakhouse in this city yeah. Yeah. is kept afloat by JP, JP Morgan. Oh, for uh, sure. Yeah, no, that's what, when people talk about like Toronto or New York and stuff like that, I always yeah. thought of it the same way as when people from here are like, oh, the dumb like hick from, you know, then you're like, well, they're not really like the way you think they are. Yeah. I when I was in New like New York, most people I think of like Chris from Brooklyn yeah. as like a New Yorker, like kind of like urban. Chris w- De Stefano. No, 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 no. Faga. Faga. Chris Faga. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, I don't know who that is. Well, I oh. think of like who is that? Like you're a little like uh, comic, but oh, Gas right. Digital Show, oh, High yeah, Society yeah. Radio. Yeah, yeah. But so. I think of like. You are more like clean than what I think of when I think of the New York guy. Yeah. Like I think of New York guy as like uh, basically dresses like kind of like a gangster from like 15 years ago a yeah. little bit. And, you know, kind of walking around, doesn't like guys bumping him. Yeah. Goes for uh, the type of guy <laughs> that would go for like uh, yeah. like a beer by himself maybe at a yeah. local watering hole. <laughs> yeah. but you know what I mean? Like that's what I – doesn't – that's the guy that I think of like with New York. The other stuff is really what they're describing is Brooklyn and college kids. That's the thing. It's like I think – a New Yorker is an amalgamation of a bunch of ideas of what New York is for outsiders, right? So it's like how Chrissy D talks is how they think New Yorkers talk, right? But what New York looks like is where I live. Where's where you, like, in like I grew up in Manhattan. Yeah. So when everybody thinks about New York, they think Manhattan. They're not thinking Bushwick. They're not thinking Bay Ridge. But when they think of New Yorkers, they think of Bushwick, Bay Ridge. Yeah. The, they think the of like, the Italian. Exactly. It's the caricatures of so, a New York. Yeah. Exactly. So you're just kind of like blending these things together. But like most people that grow up in Manhattan kind of look like me, dress like me. Yeah. New York kids are fucking weird, dude. Yeah. Like it's a weird up. place to grow up. Oh man. yeah. Like, yeah. Just, like there's no grass. Have you met any women that grew up in Manhattan? Are they strange? They are. They're interesting. Yeah. <laughs> What's their problem? It's not. The, I don't know if it's like the the the, the SSRIs or whatever. <laughs> but like, do they not need anybody? I don't need. No, they're no. not like that. Okay, they're very desensitized. They've seen the wildest shit since they're kids. I actually do know a few. Yeah, now that I'm and like about. nothing really bothers them. And it's quite nice when you meet them at first because you're like, holy shit, I can just kind of like be myself and say the wildest shit, and you just kind of like laugh and like because nothing really bothers you. But there is a problem with also not feeling. Yeah. Right? Do you, some... know what, do you know what my theory on why that is? Go. Because Toronto is a little bit. Tell me if you think I'm right. Because in cities, okay, everywhere other than the cities, the kids are the most important thing. And in cities, the parents are more important than the kids. Interesting. So the kids don't, like, there is a weird thing where they feel, people in cities feel like they could accomplish more, but they also feel like they're less important. Like they don't have like a when you're a kid living in a suburb, it's like your whole everything revolves around your soccer practice and you're this. Wow. So to me, there's like a bit of that. That that could be a hundred percent right. I, it's just so unrelatable to me because I I relate to the first part where it's like in the city, your parents are the most important. Yeah, and like you feel that like they go to work, they pay the bills. It's expensive to live here. They're busting their ass. Like I remember thinking that I didn't think that you know life was revolving around us. I thought I had a lot of freedom, which I loved, but that uh-huh. was really because my parents were probably working their ass off. Yeah, you know. I think city kids are. Uh, so you're saying in the suburbs, suburb kids feel like my fucking parents won't leave, so me and my friends can be in the pool. Like it's it's more I've like the parents are that. in the way. Yeah. I've never. <laughs> That's so yeah. interesting. And you know, there's nothing for them to do. Yeah. Nothing for the parents to do because they live yeah. in the suburbs. Like, yeah. what do they do? Yeah, what annoying parents like be in their kids' lives. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Maybe that, yeah. And it's always the suburban kids that are shooting up the schools. Yeah. And it's like, uh, we don't. We'll like shoot. That is a good point, yeah. actually. We like, wait till kids. after school. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 We're still shooting each other. Do you know what I mean? We're not going to do it in a fucking... <laughs> yeah. Like, you would That's think city fun. kids would be shooting up schools more. Yeah, why don't we do that? Because if you're already willing I think you don't think your problems are as important as other people. No, it's because like we shoot the people who deserve it. (laughs) <laughs> like someone who innocence. doesn't want to give me money yeah like 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 you have money and you could just give it to me and if you don't now i have to find a way to get it but like just shooting an innocent person you know what i mean like yeah, yeah, i didn't yeah. even ask him for money <laughs> why should i shoot him why should i kill him yeah yeah yeah, yeah. that's an asshole thing to do <laughs> this is very new york yeah yeah it is it is kind of odd that's an interesting thing about not being focused on the kids it is not focused on the kids at all at all all yeah you even feel it growing up when you see the nannies that are taking the kids to the park it's very rare you see parents take their kids to the park yeah, yeah they actually go a make nanny. a trillion dollars if they, they want do. to afford their house yeah yeah it's interesting i never really thought about it like that i was super lucky like my parents were really involved you know and um 
my dad really involved. I wanted to be at every basketball game, everything. But I remember even as an adult, like some of my friends going like, yo, did you realize that like your dad was the only parent at the basketball games? And I was like, well, the only dad, it was like a basketball team. <laughs> <laughs> sure. There was dads at the hockey game. Yeah, our hockey team. No, <laughs> but but yeah, maybe that was it. Maybe that was it. Maybe that was it. Did you think that was weird? That all of our dads were locked up? You didn't think that was fucking weird? <laughs> no, it was just uh, yeah. I never really even thought about it like that. Wow. But you did man. say I remember when you did your special and you did the the video at the beginning where it was like New Yorkers kind of feel like they can accomplish more things. It is true. Like I felt like I had that. A little bit in the suburbs. I don't know why. Where I, yeah. and I was actually thinking about. That's why you're here. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. I mean, it's the most amount of millionaires in the world in this city. It's opportunity. But I yeah. always, I was going to say, like, because you're doing like acting and stuff now, I've always felt, whether it's true or not, that I'm like, yeah, I could start a company if I want to. Yeah, I could do that. Like, it all felt like, yeah, I'll just go do that. I'll do this. You know what I mean? I agree. If I want to do that. Except I always, even when I was young, acting, I always felt like, well, no, you don't do that. That's something that your dad's an actor or like you get famous for something else and go act. Like, oh, really? I never, well, I just, even from like a young age, I just knew it wasn't like, to me, it never felt real. That was like one of the only things I've ever done in my life where I, I remember even like auditioning. I'm just like, okay, there's no path for this. Like it just doesn't exist. Like, you uh, either get famous for some other shit or like, that's why. I mean, in Canada, yeah. But I felt like that here too. I'm just like, I don't know. I felt, I just felt like always that that was the one thing where I was I mean, just like, that's I'll, a fake thing that you get, like you win from something else. I'll be honest, <laughs> I I I only acted like early in my career because I thought well, that's what comics had to do. I was just like, how do we sell tickets and go on the road and like do stand up? That's yeah, the only thing I cared about. Well, I've done it a million times. For but. sure. But so I'm like, okay, I got to be in a sitcom because that's what makes people sell tickets. Or I got to, you know, write a fucking show or something. Like I just saw that old antiquated model. And this is like prior to podcasting, all these other, you know, posting clips and, you know, specials on YouTube. Um, so that's why I want to do it. Now doing the acting, I don't even really like acting, to be honest with you, but I want to make a movie. Yeah. So I need to learn how to like behave on set, what I should expect on set, like what what um you know how to handle egos like what goes into making a movie so i'm like almost doing like research and yeah, it's yeah, cool yeah. i'm at the point right now where like i don't really have to audition so but if you were just like hustling and banging your head to the, be an actor that that's is in the nightmare complete luck Ugh. that is complete, complete luck. luck that's what i, I felt what i would tell anybody that's real. willing to do that is you have to be an absolute stereotype that is the quickest way to get uh. on as an actor be, because think about it. if you have a role where you have three or four lines, which is a lot of the Italian shit that I've mobster, done, like, you have to look like that. You don't have time for like your interesting, unique perspective on the world. Fit into a mold. Yes, because they only have 30 seconds of you on screen. So you have to be really fucking Jewish, really fucking Italian, really fucking black. <laughs> That's all they want. They want the stereotype so they don't have to explain you. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Eventually, you hope. After being a bunch of fucking stereotypes, you get an opportunity that's a little bit bigger than the stereotype, and then from there you could be someone else. But the quickest way to get in on acting, I believe this sincerely, is just be a stereotype. And if you look at how The Sopranos was cast, it proves everything I'm saying. <laughs> they just cast the mobsters. Yeah. They're like, should we get some theater nerds? No. Get the mobsters, put them in the fucking show, and it's going to work, and it did. Yeah, that's what, like half that thing. It's like none of those guys were actors. They did something else. Actually, you know what, with the offer, only thing I always... Because Schultz always gives uh, good advice on everything, but I always think it's... I've like told someone this, but it like makes me laugh that one time I was like saying like I was getting uh, I, I the people were saying to audition the cast and directors reading out and I was like I'm not yeah. doing any of that or yeah. whatever it was like driving me nuts and then you were like yeah do offer only yeah or whatever and then I was like I told them like okay I'm offer only so it's been two years it's now a single offer but <laughs> <laughs> let me tell you playing hard to get. <laughs> I was like, oh. I did offer only. This was hip advice for him. Listen, I did offer only as well. I didn't get a single audition either. Yeah. I didn't get a single audition for, no audition. for two years. Nothing. I don't no care. No offers, don't nothing. But if, if you don't have the time to do it, you got to take control of it. Yeah. So if you don't have the time to audition, just say, I'm offer only. Yeah, that's what And they're going to say no. But eventually, it's in the back of their head. Why the fuck is this kid off their own? They don't shit. know what to do. Like, yeah. it's a weird thing. Like, every they time really don't now, they freak out. Like, I mean, they're all just trying to save their jobs. Like, if you're a casting director, you're just trying to just you're tiptoeing around this whole thing to like not get in trouble. Everybody's I don't know about for about movies, that. but but yes. definitely for commercials. Like, yes, all that shit. everybody's worried about getting fired. The, yeah, like, I'm, listen. 
We have a question actually. Can we, like can yeah, we can answer go. in that context? It was in the, about this from the Patreon, but uh, he asked asked Schultz about Hollywood and movie work. Does he think that that avenue will open back up for comedians? Is it possible that Hollywood goes back to making uh, decent shit and having decent talent, making great comedies again? Like, how do you see that play out? Yeah, I think. I think it can happen. It just has to be proven on an independent level first. Everything in Hollywood is a race to be second. They want to see the thing work, and then everybody chases that thing that's working. Because like you said earlier, nobody wants to lose their job. All these executives, they have their kids in private school. They have a nice pool, a nice house. And a lot of them are passionate about film. And they're in a job where like sometimes it gets to feed their passion. But a lot of the movies they have to green light, they're like, this movie sucks. And I've spoken to some of these dudes, and I thought that they were a bunch of squares, and I've spoken to them, and I was like, holy shit, there's some, like, real, like, movie what, cinephiles or whatever. Like, some real, like, movie buffs that really care about movie and story. They're just in a job where they have to put out a Christmas movie every year per their contract, so they have to pick a shitty fucking Christmas movie and then put it out. So... It's almost like they look at that shit like we used to look at college shows mm -hmm. where it's just like this shit pays. I got to go fucking do it. And it was better better for me to understand that. I think that an indie comedy needs to explode. An R-rated indie comedy. Like we make a movie, put up $5 million for it or something like that. It absolutely murders. And then all of a sudden Hollywood's going to go, holy shit. The next Kevin Smith kind of thing. Yeah. Exactly. And they Literally that. There's a bag yes. of money there. Yes. Let's Once they see it, I mean, if you look at uh, what happened with uh, Jordan, Jordan Peele, Jordan Peele. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, like, he made what was the first one? Get out. Get out. He's really beaten that to death, huh? What's that? <laughs> what? He's like, you like black horrors? How about yeah, nine yeah, a yeah, year? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the beauty of it is they're gonna keep on giving him the bag because that first one made so much. Oh, out. so much! They're like, we need one out of ten of these to please, hit. Like, please, like that probably cost ten million to make. Four hundred million dollars. Crazy. They're like they don't need those to be successful. And the return on film is insane when you get it right. I mean, the chance of getting it right are very slim, but when you get it right, if you make a twenty-five million dollar movie and it makes two hundred fifty million dollars, oh, it's insane. Like that's crazy multiples right there. I mean, everybody's still chasing Blair Witch. To be honest, you still hear people talk about Blair Witch being like, "Remember, it cost forty grand. They made that's it on it. a, a handy cam and it made two hundred million dollars." Hundred percent. Yeah. The the biggest issue with Hollywood so far, in my estimation, just from kind of being around it and talking to some folks, is like the the separation between the person that comes up with the idea and the team that executes it is so far. Like. The guy who sells the the show, oftentimes, or the show or the movie, is nowhere near the final draft or the person who directs it. And the director is often nowhere near the person who conceived of this idea. So this director doesn't really care that much because it's not his idea initially. Yeah. The writer-directors, their movies kill at a way higher clip. For sure. Way higher yeah. clip because they care about it. They're yeah. intimately involved in this. And they just movie. know they like they started it and they go, I know what I want. This I know to exactly look like. how I need it. I know, yes. how I know much, exactly. Yeah, yeah. You know how much work it takes to make like a scene perfect. And 100%. It's like, you're editing too. So yeah. you, you want to be in there. You want to grind away at that edit. So it's like you're up until 5 a.m. the night before, like yes. changing the thing. Which, yeah, we've all done. But, like, yeah, I'm not up till 5 a.m. if I get hired to do someone's thing. Exactly. <laughs> and there are a lot of plug-and-play folks in there. Unless Some of them are a, great. A friend. Sure, sure. Or unless maybe you really believe in the project. You're you came along, you're like, it. oh, my God, this is amazing. And, and you're probably going, this can give me way better opportunities in the future. Yeah, I need yeah, to tap yeah. the fuck in. But... But yeah, I think that's the biggest issue in Hollywood. I think it worked for a while when there wasn't other content out there that was as competitive. We had much lower standards for what we watch. And um, now I think it's a little tricky. But I will say that making more movies go to streaming. Like, I don't think comedy needs to be in movie theaters. I think all comedy rom-coms should be streaming. I think horror and action can be in movie theaters. And I think that's what we'll see a shift in soon. Just because it's a movie doesn't mean it'll be in theaters. Avatar needs to be in a theater. Uh, fucking Top, Top Gun, Gun needs yeah. to be in a theater. Wrestling, wrestling, <laughs> bros don't need to be in a theater. Yeah, bros yeah, don't yeah. need to be anywhere. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? Like maybe that shit would have done all right if you just put it on at home. But on on like I was in You People, the movie, right? That number one movie in the fucking world. Yeah. I I, I think if people went out, had to put on clothes, go out and see it, do all that, I think there would have been a different expectation about. It. But the fact that you could just turn on your Netflix and see Eddie Murphy, Julie Louis Dreyfus. Uh, Jonah Hill, like you could see twenty fucking superstars, David Duchovny, by just pressing play yeah. in your underwear while you're doing laundry. Of course, everybody in the world is gonna watch that. No, so if I want to go to a movie, you're right. I want to see like 
like Top Gun. Like, Give you know me an I mean? experience. You want an experience. Yeah. Yeah. You want experience. Yeah. Give me an experience. Like I, need, like I want something that utilizes the whole surround sound thing. A hundred percent. Not just like dumb and dumb. I want to get punched or, in the or, fucking face. <laughs> or it's got to be weird. Like everything everywhere all at once was different. Yeah. It, it was like something we haven't seen before. And because of that, I'll put on clothes. I'll go to the movie theater. Right. Like it would have also killed streaming. But if you're not big, scary or different, you don't need to be in a movie theater. If you're doing traditional rom-com plot, that's great. That's awesome. We love rom-coms. It's awesome. Just put it on a home. Pop it on the TV. That's it. Put it on a home. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, I agree. So. Before we continue, we have to tell you about a couple things. This weekend, you can find me in Atlanta, Philadelphia with DP, San Diego, Tampa, Salt Lake just got added, and New York. You already know what it is. But more importantly, at patreon.com slash theboyscast, we have completed the Bugman Challenge. We have a trailer. Round one of the Bugman Challenge in the books. In the books. It is currently being edited, almost done, and we're going to announce probably ASAP when that gets released. And a trailer. We'll play the trailer trailer at the end of this episode yeah, watch to the end you'll get to watch the trailer and then sign up for the patreon so that you can watch the entire thing it's gonna be like a tv show basically yes yeah, so we're gonna basically make it a tv show and every uh one so the next uh, the next bug man will come out at 2500 2500 help us get to 2500 patrons so we can get to episode well two. let's get the first one out before we bug yeah. and badger them too much before we bug man them too much <laughs> patreon.com slash the boys guys ryanlongcomedy.com for tickets peace so we had a clip that like uh one of our clips that like a lot of people were arguing about and then you said you thought was funny that um oh, i love this one. that basically so i have i found another one and the basically the clip was like the girl saying that like you know i i give my man head like 10 times a day or whatever and i was sort of saying that <laughs> the, there's a lot of that kind of popping around and it sort of relates to the thing we were saying before where like it kind of became like the same way it would came it was like kind of hacked to make fun of christians or whatever then maybe that's changing the same way that like it's almost right now like making fun of men had no consequence is now the girl that's like the one the girl that wants to because other girls find out it's like hey i just won't hate men and then i'll be more appealing or whatever yeah, yeah but like there's a new one this is the kind of stuff that i'm fucking seeing pop around everyone keeps asking me how i keep my boyfriend happy all the time and i have these three rules starting with number one i always cook for him okay it's really important We'll cook him every single meal and homemade from scratch. He loves that. Number two, I always clean. I will literally bring out the mop and sweep. I'm lots of stuff to do. Number three, I'm always wearing something sexy around the house and just like. So this is this is yeah. the kind of this is the kind of content that's coming out now. <laughs> it's a well, it's like it's, 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 it's sarcastic. Like he's in the background rolling his eyes at what she's <laughs> yeah, saying. Yeah, yeah. Like, he's, like the question is, are they delivering or are they just making content? Like, is she yeah, actually they, this? No, that's kind. Of, that's like. Uh, did you see those videos going viral when like the. Um, I don't know if it was just Indians. I just saw Indians doing it. They basically are doing their like college admission video and they need to talk about like what type of person they are with their family around. Okay. And they started like, and basically they're making sure like, I like to wake up at six in the morning. I like to get my reading on the morning. And the mom is just there going, <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> she's, yeah, like, yeah. she's dying <laughs> laughing. Like, I love my mother. I help her cooking. I do all these things. She's just dying laughing. So the girl's just pranking her mom basically. Yeah. So I think there's a little prank in this, but I agree with no, you. No, even if you're parodying it though, that's, it's parodying something that exists. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> also, the guy, yeah. Yeah, the guy I don't think she's parodying joke. anything. No, no, the funny part was the guy was being like oh you call those like looking yeah. sexy like yeah, those track yeah. bands that was the joke <laughs> i yeah. think there's a lot of women that are just trying to grift off the manosphere thing well it's there's like, another article yeah. how about this how, 10 ways to be the perfect girlfriend like i actually yeah. looked at like there's hundreds of them right now whereas yeah. you never see that four years ago so maybe maybe it's like <laughs> i mean it's what you said at the beginning it's yeah. just they're it's, it's counterculture, the trends. Yeah. How are you going to get some, you know, how are you going to get some buzz? How are you going to get some interest? And, it's uh, counterculture to give dudes head. Yeah, you know, it's so <laughs> counterculture, dude. Like, why would you do that? I'm, yeah, 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 I'm yeah. this crazy counterculture yeah, girl yeah, that just yeah, fucking yeah, gives yeah. my yeah, boyfriend head and I makes mean, it's some literally dinner. just like the trad wife thing. I'll yeah, take I'm it. I'm the ultimate, like, trad wife now. Yeah, being cool. a trad wife is fire, dude. Yeah. <laughs> but maybe that's, yo, I mean, like, on the serious note, maybe what happened is there's a lot of these girls are out here that are lonely because they listen to what these ugly chicks had to say for the last five years. <laughs> I'm saying. And now they're like, fuck that. Like, how do I be a good girl? Also, like, they're like 34 and they're like, oh shit. That like, shit hits I, I, you I quick. don't have five years to just dick around. That anymore. shit hits you quick. That's yeah. a good point, too. Because they're like, you know what'll really help your fucking life if you mar go in marches five to five hours a day. <laughs> yeah. And then this other girl's like, give a guy head once a week and it'll probably make your life 10 times better. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All that shit makes sense when you don't have children, I think. 
I think like once you have kids, the world just gets so small. Yeah. I mean, my wife and I are trying to have kids now. And it's like, I, I can imagine you don't really, I don't see a lot of like chicks with fucking mustard stains on their shirts at these marches. No. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? No, like no. they're with their kids and they're taking care of their fucking <laughs> yeah. kids because they have to. And it's consuming their whole life, you know? Yeah. I don't know. I, I'm. Well, that was kind of, I always used to talk about that on stage. The like uh, girls, the girls uh, in the cities don't want to have kids anymore, so they have to mother everyone else on the internet. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> but like, yeah. it kind of was what was happening. And you're yeah, right. How do you force? I'm not force, but how do you like encourage people to have kids? Well, you're focusing on the having kids part. I'm more focusing on the girls giving head part. <laughs> yeah. Oh, those days are done. <laughs> no. I, you've sort of said that too. I've yeah. I've never once been in a relationship where there was regular head. <laughs> yeah. You really haven't? No. Really? No, it's always the only thing that it is, it's always part of sex, which doesn't even really do something for me. Oh, oh, that's what you mean by regular head. Uh, it's yeah, like yeah, yeah. So yeah. just on its own. Yeah. It's always yeah. like it's always like to start S and start then the lawnmower. And then at yeah. some point it would be like, okay, let's have sex. And I was like, yeah, it's no. never start to finish. <laughs> no. Yeah, 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 yeah. We had, uh, excuse me, we had a deal. And but can I be honest with you? Like, I'm on so much fucking hair pill medication <laughs> that, like, I don't think I could just get head and also satisfy my wife. Like, if, I, if I'm if i getting head three times a week and my wife wants yeah, to fuck yeah. three times a week, that's too much. Yeah. So I got to either be bald and do that, <laughs> you know what I mean? Or I got to just be satisfied with my wife and then, you know, take Do you them. think the hair pills... Uh, do you do you think that there's any change in like motivation that's like a uh, or that's what I'm blaming it on? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna take personal accountability for that. Okay, it's the hair pills. <laughs> or do you think just fucking I go this fucking like you literally are like I just got rid of a problem where I'm like I can yeah. watch like a it's hot not because I'm having sex with the same woman <laughs> for the rest of my life. It's the hair pills, it's Ryan. Not that. So funny. Why do you keep asking questions about this incredibly volatile subject? <laughs> that Schultz is wife being like, you know, we uh, had a nice night. I was thinking, lights the candles. She, he's like shaking the propecia. It's <laughs> like, ah, oh, babe. Dig, 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 dig. <laughs> <laughs> babe, yeah. Well, what I if mean, they just put that as a side effect to help us out? You know what I mean? Just like, we got you, fellas. We'll take this one on the chin. We can have sex if you want to have sex with a bald man. <laughs> If that's what you, is that what you want? <laughs> yeah, we'll have bald kids. <laughs> Put a bald cap on and come oh, on. Like, I just want you to get used to it if this is what you need. <laughs> oh, dude. That's so true, though. Oh. It's so true. Okay. One other thing is, um, so there's this self-help guru mm -hmm. who sold a strand of his hair for $8,000 in China. Wow, and he was man. like Tony Robbins of China, right? Yeah. And there's like... It's pretty crazy where it's like all these, <laughs> there's like a guy who uh, he lost like 200 grand and then his wife was like divorcing him. Like all the, he, this guy's like running a pretty good scam, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I was wondering if like, is there any of the like self-help guys in any way that have, uh, that you've connected with ever? Like I know James Aldrich are saying New York's dead. You must have hated that. Hated that. <laughs> uh, I spoke to Tony. I, I like, you use you Aldrich on your podcast too. I spoke, yeah, I spoke to Tony Robbins. Um, I sent my brother to him. My really? My brother was having like a rough time. And, uh, you know, he, he's, uh, my, my brother has some, you know, mental health stuff. So, uh, I sent it to him and, uh, your brother went to the actual, yeah, event? yeah, yeah, yeah. He went to the event like for like the week or whatever it is. Yeah. It's like whatever. Whatever. And, uh, he came back like fixed for like a week. For really? One, for Dead ass. Week. Like yeah. it was like, I, I he's fired up. Right? Noticeable difference. Yeah kicks down the door bro and then you know obviously you're not continuing doing that but like i think he definitely has helped people but i'm trying to think self-help guru did i really not even guru like i'll say that like one that to me yeah right now like early tim ferris but to me i was thinking like i think huberman's probably the best guy right now oh, huberman's great because he'll yeah. say like science yeah, yeah well he's science. all just like he's science. just a professor but yeah. the one thing that like just not a dweeb or maybe i'm not thinking i think i'm thinking of huberman. <laughs> Wait, who are you thinking of <laughs> the other guy Am I not thinking of Huberman? Which one? David he, Goggins. He runs all these companies. That's all of them. Uh, Fuck. Well, he always talks about, like, the one thing that... Huberman is looking to the sun, taking an ice yeah. bath. The beard guy. Yeah. We yeah. had him on Who the pod. You? Yeah. Who are you? Yeah, I'm thinking of... No, I'm not thinking of this guy. <laughs> <laughs> Who's the guy that runs all the companies? Joe Rogan. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> ah, shit. 
Okay, there's another guy that I like. <laughs> there's another guy that you don't even know his name? I'm not very gonna bell. His podcast is called The Game. Ooh. Oh, Alex Hermosi. Hermosi. Oh, yeah, Hermosi. Yeah, 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 yeah. made a video yeah, about like. you, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like him. Okay, so the reason I liked him is because the same reason I used to like Tim Ferriss back in the day, where it's like yeah. he speaks to you. Like every, they're all everyone's so much full of bullshit, and I, I I'll never get like jazzed. I don't need someone to like hype me up. Yeah. But he was like, he was talking about like work life balance, and he was like, you know, they're all everyone's like wrong about that. Don't listen to anyone. He was like, listen, yeah. like if you think of what you're doing as like a game, he yeah. was like, you know, I do that as much as I can, and the only thing that makes that change is if my de- returns are decreasing. Yeah. Like if I'm fucking, there's not like about having work life balance, but if I'm like 12 hours in and I can tell that I'm too tired to be doing this, then yeah. maybe I need a shift. But it's like what everyone else is saying is bullshit, and I was like. Cause you can't talk to anyone about like anyone. If yeah. you were like, oh, I'm like, I don't have time for this. Anyone will just be like, well, yeah, do less stuff. Like, there's no one yeah, you can yeah. actually like. Yeah, they're like, why don't you meditate two hours a day? And you're like, well, I don't have time for that. Yeah, so I <laughs> felt like it's like, any. I feel like I like the guys that are like actual listening to the real problems that people have, but like yeah. give you practical solutions. Yeah. So to me, but I feel like you're run your life in such a regimented way that you must have like somewhere that came from. If that makes sense. Let me think of. Or is it that. all just? Like, I, w- I wish that I was a little bit more regimented. That's what I'm trying to get better at right now. But I do like Harmozy and I love his like brutal honesty like dude he was on some podcast or some interview it was like him and his wife and then uh and then the question was like I might be fucking this up but the question was like you know how did you guys end up getting married and he was just like he's like listen could I have dated a hotter girl yeah <laughs> but what we were compatible you know what I mean and compatibility is the most important thing and she's just sitting right there next to him. he literally said he goes he hired her for his business and he goes look like maybe we can date but if this doesn't work out at least we can work together yeah <laughs> I mean, it was. I, I like kind of yeah. like that shit, bro. He's wild, but he's a, he's a seemingly a very intelligent dude and driven. And uh, yeah, I wanted to. Matter of fact, I wanted to have him on the pod. I wanted to just kind of like talk to him. Yeah, he's real smart. People are saying he's like the new Naval, if you know that dude. Naval. Yeah, I like Naval too. Yeah, I like Naval too, but because he just like is he has a lot of good like aphorisms and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, as far as like having that regimented life, like, yeah, I don't know. I, I've had I've. How do I say it? I don't know. I wish that I was better at business. Is that so? Did you sort of have to force yourself to get good at it, but it wasn't like natural? What you didn't I get what, good at it. What obviously. I mean by business is like organizations and structuring. Like I have like really systems. great guys that are developing like systems and structuring, but like we could be better at that, and I could be way better at that. I'm good at making decisions and. Uh, creative choices and like I think I have a good idea of like what the culture is kind of like wanting caring about even maybe before they know yeah does that make sense or before it's like obvious but in terms of like structuring the business I don't like doing it it's annoying and uh, boring I mean it's literally a different part of your brain it's like a different side of your brain like the artistic and like that side of your brain where you're like running a business I want to have the crazy ideas yeah and then you guys figure out how we do it that's the most ideal well, they, thing. It's like now, Steve you Jobs, can't do right? that. It's exactly. Like, now, you can't do it in the beginning. You have to do everything with your guys in the beginning, right? So we've been able to do that and continue to hire, et cetera. But, like, there are people that really know how to, like, create compensation packages based on the different contributions people are doing, like, real business stuff, guys. I don't really know how to do that. I'm just like, yo, you're killing it. All right, you should get more money. You know what I mean? Like, I'm just like, uh-huh. is everybody having enough money? Like, yeah. I try to not look at the money at all. Like, I, I like to be surprised if we make money. You know what I mean? Like I have a number of money I think uh, I have, I think. And that means that my wife is good. My family's good. Her family's good. And as long as this guy's going to get that, Dane Cook. Oh, immediately. Steve I Harvey. Said, Dan, bro, I say this, Steve all, the Harvey? Time. I say this oh. all the time. I'm the perfect candidate for this. Yeah. The perfect candidate for this to yeah. happen to. But I also appreciate, I also like operating in a complete creative way. Meaning every decision I'm making is, do I want to do this creatively? You only have so much brain power. I guess. I don't know. Some people are really good at all those structures. Well, there's also, stuff. they say that, like... But then people become, like, these cogs in a machine. I never want that. Well, there's not, happening. like... You know how they have, like, liberal conservative, the way that people say? But then... Yeah. I think Jordan Peterson talked about that, but it was, like, the actual, like, person that's liberal conservative, the liberal wants to, like, build things and then move on that's more, like, entrepreneurial and the conservative's better at, like, maintaining the system. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't care about that at all. <laughs> I understand we need systems because my schedule is getting so tight and then I have a very limited amount of time and then I can't create effectively, right? Because if all I'm doing is business shit, I don't get to write. But uh, let yeah. me, I'll say that then where I go the other way, where I was, I was like, the way that you make your act, 
yeah. you're tinkering with it. You're just doing it with someone else. I think you just yeah. have to, because you probably have it because you tinker with your hour, like the way that you probably would tinker with a business. Oh, yeah, we do it. Like yesterday, we sat down for hours. And we tried to map out what the next few months are going to be like on the pod, what the next few months are going to be like touring and try to get all that in. And then we try to set up a system. OK, we're going to announce a new date. This person is going to talk to this person about flyers. This person is going to make sure that we have a release time. We're going to have a clip or something to go out with it. And, we, and I have to sit there and we have to go and I have to go, OK, why don't we set up this system and create this structure so that you don't need to ask me for anything when it's time to go. You send me a Dropbox folder. It's got everything I need and I can post it. And I might even want to get to the point where I just like give my Instagram account to somebody for the posts that one's tough yeah. because it's your message basically texting as well yeah i it, maybe they just can sign in when they <laughs> have to post things because even when you start to have to do like the promo and do that kind of post and that can be like 30 minutes or an hour of your sure. day going back and forth it's just like i could be more effective writing with that but we did that all day yesterday i wanted to i had in my calendar i'm writing from four to seven and i by writing i mean just listen to sets just fucking yelling, calling a buddy on the phone and just screaming at him about some crazy bit, some idea, asking, hey, what's going on with your wife? Oh, that does happen to me with my wife. Like just talking, being creative. And then I, instead of writing from four to seven, we just did business shit from 12 to seven. So then I have an hour before I go on shows to kind of do it. And then I'm upset on stage because I don't feel like I'm getting the most out of the stage. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So it's like I need to put some more focus on that and maybe hire more effectively in that. The ideal situation is you hire a person who loves business the way that I love comedy. And they can run everything like a business. And I don't even have to think about anything at all. And they can build up an immense amount of trust in me like in, in other words i trust them with all these business decisions so i don't even have to think about it the tricky thing for us as like creatives is we arrogantly think we're the best decision makers right and we got here so far because of our decisions so we should believe that but there are people out there that are better decision makers than us right there are there's somebody who's better at like scaling tickets for a show better than me right there's someone who's more thoughtful than me about it but because so far in our careers when we make a decision about what the thumbnail should look like and how long this joke should be and how long the special should be, and when we should put out, and that's worked out for us, you know, and now we're doing these fucking shows, it's very hard to be like, okay, I'll relinquish that control. But you need to in order yeah. to grow. Yeah. Exactly. So it's it's just a tricky it's a tricky thing. Yeah. No, yeah. I listen to when you talk to me about that stuff, you have good advice. Do you get hyped up? Uh, about like people like Elon Musk, the Rockets, and stuff like that, or do you like do you, that? That's that get you stoked up, or do you? No, I don't care about it at all. The Rocket shit. Because I feel like that was one of the things that I'm surprised that you don't. Yeah. Because you seem like a guy that would be stoked about like a call, like. Uh, what what do they call it? like you know like going to the moons like you know these feats where it's like men are sort of like winning at something. Yeah. I do get excited. Do you know what I mean? Okay, this is what I got excited about. There was that video that came out to Gangsters Paradise where they had this. It was an Elon Musk uh, kind of like hyper cut, and um, it went pretty viral. And it was basically like his company. I think it was a uh, what is the fucking company SpaceX. doing the rocket? SpaceX was about to go broke and like all these other astronauts were kind of shitting on him and he gets like emotional. He's like a robot guy. He yeah, like starts yeah, crying. Yeah. He's like, it really hurt me they said that. And then on the final launch, the one that if it didn't work out, he would be completely broke and the company is done. It actually goes and it soars. He makes all his money in Gangster's Paradise. And I love that because I, I love the hero's journey. Like you I like love the story. against all odds. That is my favorite thing. Like the best thing that you could tell me is like, I, I'm, I wish I had a teacher that said to me, you're never going to be anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you want that chip on your shoulder. Do you know what I mean? Like, honestly, maybe it's better they didn't because I might be a fucking tyrannical dictator. But unfortunately, all my teachers are like, you're really talented. You can do things with yourself. But if there was one that was like little amounts anyway? of nothing, oh Fuck. my fucking God. Like you needed to be cut from your for like basketball team like Michael Jordan. You know? Bro, I know. Just it, that fine. It, now, maybe this is a good thing because now like I care about people and like I want to help yeah, yeah. everybody and I, and I want other people to succeed. But if there was one teacher, I swear to fucking God. God. There was one teacher. It might be a problem. <laughs> yeah, you'd have a whole special just dedicated to that one teacher just shitting on them like Michael Jordan. You just have, yeah. That's why people. Dude, I was watching that Jordan that. documentary with friends. who are like, God, Jordan's such a lunatic. And so I was like, Luna? Oh yeah, he's a lunatic. Yeah. <laughs> he's a lunatic. Yeah, that's, that's, a fucking yeah. Nobody thinks like that. Nobody <laughs> holds grudges in that way. That guy's a fuck. Yeah, he is a lunatic. That guy, weirdo. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, she's going back like, fuck you, Miss Anderson. She's yeah. like, I gave you an A. Miss Galindo. <laughs> yeah. Miss Galindo. I know her. She left me off the track team in third grade or something like that. Miss <laughs> Galindo did that shit. That drove me fucking crazy. <laughs> yeah, I'll remember. I'll remember things. But I, yeah, I love that. I love against all odds. Like, I, I can get really into, you know, the fucking Hobbit, Lord of the Rings. Like, sure. I love it. <laughs> I love it. That's fire. I don't care much about like Bezos already having like a crazy successful company and then wanting to go to the moon. I got gotcha. you. I want the motherfucker that everybody. You care about off. the people, not the thing. Yes. Yeah. Man, like they wrote you off and then you went out there and did it. Let's go. That's and fire bigger to risk takers too. Like it seems like Elon is really rolling the dice way more. I than like. That. Like Bezos is just like, yeah, if this doesn't go, like this doesn't really affect doesn't me. And he goes, I can be a rock. He got the guy. money from Congress. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. He bullied he them. Like, he, yeah, he got they. He, they lost the bid, and they still gave him the money. So it's there's no yeah. stakes here. Like like Elon seems to really like walk like walking that like tightrope where he's like, if I fuck this up, like I'm it's just over. start from scratch. Yeah. Like, <laughs> you see, he got caught with his burner accounts. <laughs> uh, yeah, 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 yeah. You ever had a burner? <laughs> no, dude, I don't. No, I've only ever had a burner like ten years ago, like a Facebook burner to bug my friends. But uh -oh. <laughs> so, what would you do? You just troll them? Yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we we had a girl account, and then we would message all like dudes that we knew, and then like. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, that we is, had one, we had one guy. That no, is horrifying. We have bro. a buddy. That's Imagine like, like opening it up and using your cat. best riz on your boy. <laughs> we have, dude, oh no! We have a fucking buddy that's a comic. That one time someone messaged him and he was like, "Who's this?" And we were like, "Let's go!" No. <laughs> And then for fucking three years, every now and then we'll message him and be like, yo, you in Toronto tonight? Like, we got to link up. Like, last time was so hot. And, he, and he'll be like, yeah, I said that. And you keep turning. You keep like. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, and then he'll be like, my feelings. And he'll be like, can you send a pic? And he's like, I think he thinks he knows who it is. But it's like. <laughs> Bro. Think about how much pussy, like, the friend, you and the friends of yours that were in on this prank have missed out on because you thought. It was your friends trying to get you. Oh, I, I was, I was like, skeptical of everything. every girl that reaches out. Of course, you gotta oh. have video of your first birthday. If I'm, <laughs> if I'm fucking believing any of this, pull the passport today's paper. Yeah, all yeah, that yeah. stuff, bro. I had a, I had, a, I got catfished by this chick. Really? Or dude, this is this is a while back, but the girl that was the in the photos that was being used was beautiful, and. Uh, so I, I was like, yo, who is this? Like, I asked Twitter. I was like, yeah, I got catfished. But I was like, who is this girl? Like, because this girl is fire. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, and then I DM the girl. She responded. And I was like, am I going to be the first person to fuck the actual <laughs> yeah, yeah, girl to turn around being catfish? catfish? Like, do I have enough clout? <laughs> and then she just ghosted me. But still, how dope would <laughs> that, that be? be crazy. Like, we end up getting married? Like, yeah. I get catfished with this hot chick and then find her in reality? <laughs> you found the hot chick. <laughs> what? And then you get like, the guy who catfished you? we did message a little you? bit. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, invite him <laughs> yeah, to the wedding? Yeah, invite her to the wedding. You're the official. Yeah, yeah, did you yeah. tell her the did you I tell her the whole story. You're like, you won't believe this. Can you imagine? Dude, it was so crazy. And they also sent pictures of your feet. Like, can you make sure that your feet? Can you? You just, yeah, because like, they might not have been yours, and yeah. I don't want to get double catfish. So if you could just send them feet over, that'd be weird. If I was jerking off to somebody else's feet, so if you could just send oh, those smoke over. too, man. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that'd be a fucking goat story. Dude. Yeah, I couldn't pull it off, though. <laughs> you know what someone told me? That you had, uh, you were on a podcast, some, somewhere you were talking about, like, uh, having bad trips on like weed and mushrooms or oh, something mushrooms, like that. Yeah, yeah. It, mushrooms. That's what it was. Someone told, I can't yeah. remember who, but someone told me that they go, you know how like my story about like how I can't do mushrooms or whatever. Yeah. They said you were on a podcast or something telling the exact same yeah. story almost. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, that's interesting. And I wonder if there's like certain type of brains that just can't fucking deal with that, that shit. That could be it. That could be it. I mean, yeah, I was in. Can't uh, let go. Bro, that's gotta be a part of it. I've done. So I, what happened? Yeah, I was, I was at, I was at Burning Man. And I did mushrooms. I think this was like maybe the second time I went to Burning Forgot Man. Forgot you're a Burning Man guy. Yeah, I love Burning Man. And uh, second time. And uh, if my wife is pregnant, inshallah, <laughs> is that wrong to go to Burning Man if she's not too deep into it? To uh, bring her? It depends no, on, no. No, 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 no. Wait, you think you have to take nine months off of doing stuff? That's kind of how yeah. I felt. What no, the you don't fuck? have to take nine months. It depends where and the I thing. I think you have to take. But I feel I mean, a little guilt. Yeah, I, I, the problem you too is. You take the is, first day and the last day. Yeah. The, the problem too is if you ask her and she goes, yeah, it's fine. And you're like, but is it? 
Yeah. You know, like you come back and she's like, you seriously just were oh, fucking God doing DMT for the last happens. week? Like, oh, oh my yeah. goodness. Christ. That's a tough one. Yes, but I, I still You have to do pay a go. doctor to say that she has something that might be contagious and you need to stay away <laughs> from her. stay away and burning <laughs> No, you got to go to a dry desert. You got yeah. to hire, do- hire, yeah, hire a doctor to quarantine you away from That's her. That's <laughs> It happens to coincide. Yeah. Yeah, no. Anyway, wait, uh, oh yeah, so where I'm at Burning Man and uh, I did. I took mushrooms for the first time. I'm starting to feel it. I think the the thing I said is, uh, yeah, it felt like someone took the condom off colors. <laughs> You know, and it was just like like purple was hitting. You know what yeah. I mean? Like it was just the moon was just beautiful, and I just kept following it. It was uh, and uh, and then I randomly got internet in the middle of the playa, and I looked at Twitter for some reason. I just saw a bunch of motherfucking hate people bagging on me, and I and it was the my trip completely flipped oh, that's the worst thing that you can do oh i know i should never look to my phone and i wasn't i didn't get internet the entire time i was there just randomly in this one moment maybe i was hallucinating but yeah, maybe it was yeah even. but like i just and then it completely flipped and uh i'd also taken some more mushrooms too because i thought i was like i want to really feel it yeah. this colors thing is really cool but i'm not seeing visions as i've been told before and um and man i every time i close my eyes I I was in that uh, Jackie uh, no sorry Bruce Lee movie uh, is it Enter the Dragon where he's fighting the statues but the statues were like my insecurities manifested <laughs> so I wanted funny to, to cut sit- out to just like you and an empty field <laughs> oh, oh my god dude it was gnarly man so I couldn't go to sleep but I was exhausted so I'm just standing I'm just sitting there in this Winnebago with my eyes open staring at the ceiling like hoping that I'll eventually just pass out some guy with a shell necklace having sex right beside you <laughs> <laughs> so yeah that was brutal but i did it again and they were kind of fun they, oh you got it figured out yeah yeah, yeah. but i don't know i don't it just doesn't it's not as wild as i thought like weed is still way better but it just makes I think me so acid's fucking, the, the, the next oh, i can up. imagine yeah, that's, that's him yeah i think I've that fucked with bit. my brother man i'll be honest with you what's that i think the acid fucked with my brother yeah. i know people that have I, I had a, I, oh for sure i mean i hesitate i had a friend who i've said this before but like i had a friend who uh he was in india and he was like a big acid guy and he had these like two little vials of liquid acid and one of them was uh concentrate like every drop was a hundred hits Holy. and every and then the other one was every drop was one hit and, and this guy didn't and he's like didn't label <laughs> them properly and he's with this girl and then he, at one point he's just like we want to do acid and he goes I'm pretty sure it's this one. Oh god and he's wrong and he's just like not been the same <laughs> <laughs> Oh God! Yeah, I remember. See- I hadn't seen him for years, and I go, "He's off." And someone was like, "Yeah, you oh, took two hundred hits of acid in one go." That will fuck you up. Yeah, man. well, especially if you have something under there. Like, I think, I think there's a lot of people where like mental illness starts to to schizophrenia in the family. Oh, specifically, which I have that. a little bit of. Yeah. Oh, for sure. I mean, some people with weed. Like, I know people who are just like weed. Just you know, if you if you're like kind of on the edge there, that's yeah. mental, mental health wise. Like, it, weed could just. I get send you after over. I smoke when I smoke weed. I have so much fun. It is indescribable. The high I get from smoking weed is it's like up there. Molly feels different because you just feel love. But weed, the laughter and the joy that I get from weed. I mean, if I I feel like it's hard to get it now because everyone like it's not. It's like it's such a not. It's like having a beer for everyone. So you can't be the guy that's like, you guys. I'm that guy. (laughs) And let me tell you something. You're getting on board. You don't have a question. You're getting on board. But I'm so depressed and anxious. You're like, boys, we are tripping. No, no, we are laughing. We are laughing. And but I get so depressed and anxious the next day. Like I literally. Uh, You're like a weed hangover. I have the most severe weed hangover for days. Wow. I'm like. A shell of myself, so it sucks because this thing that I love. But I assume that's, that's what it is. Like you got to pay the price for the joy. So you, you know, you work out, you pay it before, and then you feel good afterwards. And I think with the weed, for whatever reason, I have a buddy of mine. He could take Molly and feel nothing the next day. He does not feel any hangover. And I'm like, why aren't you taking Molly every day? <laughs> like, like, the fuck, you have a gift from God. Like just do it. This is the best feeling ever. But there's a cost for that shit. I actually want them to ban weed now because I feel like people are. I feel like people are coming to shows high 
Oh yeah, ban it from a yeah. lot more, and yeah. like, or they're doing edibles, and I think people just kind of relate laughter and comedy as they should, but they don't realize they're like a guy being... yelling in your face is a lot, maybe. Yeah, you like... also got to follow what's going on. That was like in Toronto, they had all these weed lounges. Yeah, and, and when they introduced dabs, like when dabs showed up, game over. You're like, all the comedy shows got noticeably worse, yeah. and they weren't even good to begin with. Yeah, but they got so much worse because everybody was just like catatonic. They yeah. were so fry. They were just like. And you're like, this is not good. And also, you want people to feel things like in a comedy show. Like, I don't want you to be too relaxed. I I want you to be anxious. I want to be able to, like, make you feel uncomfortable. And I feel like if you're high, you're like, it's impossible to make me feel uncomfortable. Uh Like, these are just words that are coming in your mouth. It's okay. I don't give a fuck. And I've seen that couple people in the audiences. Or I'm just bombing. (laughs) <laughs> it could be just me bombing Because <laughs> no, no, no. all these people are high Yeah, why, why, why are you high? Stop doing edibles <laughs> No, there was this girl last night though And I asked her and I was like, I was like are you okay? Is everything, because I thought she didn't speak English Because she was kind of giving me that like blank stare And uh, and her boyfriend answered for her And was like, no, nah, we just hit, took edibles And I'm like, why would you ruin this experience? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, go to a movie Yeah, yeah like, like, movie's better Go watch like everything, whatever yeah. all at once Yeah <laughs> I cannot say that fucking title to save my life either. <laughs> yeah. Everything, everywhere. everywhere everything I mean, there's, they once. have hot dog hands. Take an edible. You'll love it. Yeah. Their hands turn into hot dogs. It's <laughs> yeah. hilarious. It's for people on me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We got two questions. Let's do our it. thing. Uh, this is the first one is, uh, so do you know what a bug man is? No. Okay, so we do this. Uh, we're doing this competition to see who's the least of a bug man. But okay. bug man's guy who can't fix anything. Uh, it was originally Nietzsche's like a modern, basically modern city man that like doesn't. Know how. So that's the question man. was. Are you, we talk about it a lot. Oh so the question was, is, are you a bug man? Embarrassingly so. Do you hire th- people to fix it? I think me fixing some something is me hiring someone to fix something. Uh huh. Uh, and like, yeah, it is bad. I am. I am. How do you react to people calling that manly? Like, do you think that 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 you think that they're wrong or wait wait wait. well people associate it's like you can't fix stuff and i'm always like okay yeah i don't do my job and then come home and do someone else's job (laughs) that's a good point too yeah i haven't really thought about it because i grew up in new york where everybody can't fix shit so they can't even drive cars here exactly Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah like i can at least drive a car you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> that's pretty cool for me. Yeah, I think if I lived on a ranch and I was a bug man, I'd be a loser. But I live in New York where I can like hire people. To Everyone's bug man. Yeah, yeah. So I guess I never really felt bad about it at all. Like ever. if you if you and if you and your wife like buy something, yeah. would you attempt to put that together, and what would it be a mess? I, this is how much of a bug man I am. My wife put together our closets. She's hung most of the things on the walls. I thought you were just gonna say she's hung. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's one of those. Not that progressive. No, <laughs> uh, but. Uh, but yeah, like she actually did all that shit. Yeah, I don't know. I'd make I make money. Making a girl yeah. do stuff is great. Oh no no, <laughs> she wants to do it. I make the money, and then you do whatever you want with the money. Well, a lot of times they want to do it because they don't trust you to do it. <laughs> yeah, that also she shouldn't trust me, and I wouldn't do it. Uh-huh. If she's like, "Can you build this closet?" I'd be like, "I'll hire some." Hire yeah. a guy. What about yeah. like hanging a uh, f- like a picture? Hire a guy. Hire a guy. Yeah, hire a guy. Hanging a picture, even yeah. So yeah, this is I peak mean, bug man form. Yeah, like what if the peak we, male form? <laughs> who, who am I? I mean, like, do bug men or what is it? Non bug man. A man. So, a man. <laughs> okay. So what do men do? Like, what do like manly men do? Do they call their friends? Be like, dude, I hung a photo of me and my wife today. It's just another day. Thing. I think they belch after. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'll be in that conversation with them, and I'll be like, um, yeah, like I made millions of dollars. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How about you come over and hang some shit at my house? I'll give you fucking two thousand dollars and I'll yeah. throw it at you. There you go. There you go. Yeah, yeah. Matter of fact, next time you're hanging shit, I want to watch. <laughs> How much would it be just to watch and beat off in the corner? I'll just what is it? Hang cuck myself. <laughs> yeah, I feel no insecurity about hiring another dude to do manly shit about. Neither do I've never have no. either. But like, yeah. there's it's almost like it has become a thing where in the last little bit, like people have been giving dudes shit who don't want to fucking fix shit. Yeah. I mean, if I if that was the only thing that I could do, I would give dude shit about that. You're right. It's probably yeah. If you're like the, you know, uh, you them work, jockeying work for, for the position. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. all just jockeying. Yeah, that's smart. Do it. You're right. I got us. you. You're you right. Gotta compete with us. <laughs> Call that's, us bug men or whatever. That's exactly <laughs> what it is. They, yeah, yeah, they go to the the girl that you're talking to, and they're like, you know, he's a bug man. He can't even fix shit. And yeah. she's like, but he works at JP Morgan. <laughs> yeah. Do you know how much his bonus was? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think he's fine. 
<laughs> that was that was the first one, and then this the the last question was uh, people want to know the which top tens a lot, but like let's say top three heavies of all time. Oh, and people don't know heavies one. is heavies is the pop top three heavies <laughs> of all time um, for you. That's a fucking great question, to be honest. I mean, we have to put Yomi in there just because, you know, she's so instrumental. Yomi Park. Yeah, Yomi legendary Park. Legendary heavy. Yeah, super. Le they're legendary heavies. They're not the top ones, but they're legendary. Yeah. Um, Do the legendary heavies have to all be big, or sometimes they just want to be no. nice? Do you want to know legendary heavies? I'm going to throw one out right now. Um, oh, my God. What the fuck is her name? <laughs> she was in Wild Things. Denise Richards. Find Denise it. Richards. Okay. Wild Things. <laughs> champagne yeah. scene. Oh. Those were fucking incredible. Was, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, amazing. Well, you gotta right look there. this up. I you, got this shit seared into my oh, goddamn yeah. brain. I never forgot. I'm that. going to Mr. Skin. Oh, okay. <laughs> Do you guys remember Mr. Skin? No. no. What's Mr. Skin? I think it was Mr. Skin, but he basically anytime a girl ever got nude in a in a, in a movie, he had that was the whole Catalog. website. Yeah, yeah. So amazing. you type in an actress, and she knows anytime. Like oh. he even showed like it'll a nipple be, or whatever. That'll be first one. I mean that. That scene was legendary. What's her name? Matt Denise Dillon. Richards. Denise Richards. She was married to Charlie Sheen. Yes. Um, I'm saying Denise Richards. Put boobs. Denise. <laughs> no, no, no. Put Denise Richards. Wild things. Wild things. Boobs. Yeah. And well, it is just was, yeah, yeah, iconic. Things. Okay. Her and Nev Campbell, right? That, and that Nev scene. Campbell wouldn't even take her top off because oh, she's so. Oh, there we go. Denise was we got with. it. And it's who is this guy? That's a, this is what we're talking it's about, Matt right? Dillon, right? Yeah, it's Matt Dillon. Oh, dude, yeah. Matt but Dillon. you don't even see the cannons right there. I mean, look at that right there. That's oh, cannons. Cannon yeah. alert. Okay, we I can't, mean, can't put that on the screen right there. Fantastic tip. <laughs> um, and then number three. Woo! Okay, I'm nice having us. Think number three, a just absolutely phenomenal. I mean, this is a brand new one, and I actually have to see them full form. Jenner. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta put a trans chick in there right now. Um, this uh, this young milk queen, uh, Sydney <laughs> Sydney Sweeney. That is a legendary heavy. I He's right. I mean, that. You, oh, Danny's playing dumb. No, I don't. Never, never seen him. Euphoria, the blonde. She's in oh yeah, 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 yeah. She's in everything. I know, right I know. Right stack, stack. Yeah, yeah. The skinny, the skinny with the huge tit combo is always uh, just a fascinating thing to see. Yeah. I know. It's just so peculiar. Like how how does that work? Especially if it's natural. It's like a hormonal problem or something. It must like, be. It's a defect. It's, it yeah. Seems like the. It's like in the like an elephant or something, or something <laughs> like that, right? Like there's just some weird disease they got that worked Dude, out. Dude, I had a kid in my camp who. Elephantitis of the balls, and he literally had a no. sling that had to go around his neck. That like, hunt, like that's not true. I swear, no. It was they were like he had. It was like a real condition. <laughs> Only got, his balls. He got ragged on so hard. They he were had like a fucking sling that goes through his thing. And this is a Jewish school. Jewish camp, yeah. <laughs> it's just like the most Jewish camp thing to have that condition. We go. I uh, have uh, elephantitis of the balls. And uh, yeah, That's I can't remember what his funny. name was, but dude, it was like uh, that was a thing in our camp. I mean, he's he's <laughs> he's put here to repopulate <laughs> the world yeah, with Jews. Like, he's, like, he's like, I'm the stud. He's I'm got the... six million right there. <laughs> like, you need to let him go to work. He's like that tortoise that repopulated the island. <laughs> Have you heard about this? No. There was like a turtle and the species was going extinct and this one turtle named Jose, obviously, <laughs> it was like, it was like, I got this and he just repopulated a thousand kids or something like that. That kid, yeah, dude, Ira, yeah. or whatever his name was. Probably something like that. Oh Gamer. my, you gotta let that man at it, bro. You gotta take him over to Williamsburg and they Huge just- ball. Huge balls. Yeah. His name's Hugh. Fill him up. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah. Those what are three a three great story. heavies. Uh, yeah, I would say that I was even gonna say that like I feel like a new one was Emily Radzikowski, but I agree with you. Sydney Sweeney pushed her out. Yeah. She's the new her. Yeah, I can't. Now Emily Radzikowski has a podcast. You can't have nice tits and do a fucking podcast. Yeah, I can't. <laughs> no and thanks. I, and I think I get annoyed with the whole like uh, you know, women are objectified, but keep objectifying me. She's you annoying. Know, like, yeah. Hands down, she's annoying. It's Sydney what, Sweeney yeah, hasn't yeah. said that. What did much you just do with your hands? Hands down. <laughs> right? That was hands down. Hands okay, because I saw that and I was like, gay, gay, gay. And then I was like, oh, hands down. Got it, got it, got it. This I bitch, picked up on that too. This fucking bitch. If that, make, if that makes it into your act, as like I go to her, I go. everybody in the audience is like, <laughs> ew. That's my catchphrase. Yeah, Boys, when I see that girl's annoying, I yeah. think we could say, hands down. <laughs> 
<laughs> but isn't that a weird like that's this weird type of feminism where it's like stop looking at my body but also look at my body yeah. Yeah. well because they obviously still a model realize that they get all this stuff from their body they're like well we don't want to lose all the but the it's like benefits. oh what yeah. I'm just an object yeah. <laughs> I hate the patriarchy yet everything I've ever done in my life is surrounded by and supported by the patriarchy yeah, yeah, just, it. yeah the patriarchy disappears so you know what I don't look at your tits anymore. That nah, tits yeah. are out for me. That's too. your that's your punishment. <laughs> yeah, you okay? right. we won't object. You don't want the patriarchy. <laughs> You're not getting me looking at them fucking fat knocks anymore. I'm taking a stand. That's what we gotta do, we fellas. We're going on strike. Yeah, <laughs> plenty of tits out there. Uh, top three heavies. Great answer. Yeah, I'm trying to think if there's anybody else. I okay. Oh, but we got a bonus heavy coming at you. <laughs> I'm trying to think of like bonus iconic, heavy on the Patreon. <laughs> iconic heavies like. I like a natch. I like a natural heavy. Yeah. So I got to think on it. I don't know. For next time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely next time. For the next top time, three were fire. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, a, a, a reverse great heavy from Emily Rajakowski. Yeah. You can beat it and stop podcasting. That's yes. our game. <laughs> but you should have her on the pod. Yeah. She's not invited. <laughs> She's no one's gonna happen. She's gonna be on the podcast, and afterwards there's a prank. We go. We weren't filming. Beat it. <laughs> <laughs> A pretty big favor you asked. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> I mean, you were right. begging me to do this. <laughs> yeah. And we weren't filming. There's no <laughs> there's no cards in these cameras. <laughs> She's like, okay. <laughs> All right. Gotcha. <laughs> The worst gotcha <laughs> ever. Flag or two podcast. Yeah. Brilliant idiots. Actually, the thing we were talking about before, that's how I originally knew you even before comedy was like a fucking one of my black friends listened to Brilliant Idiots. Respect. Yeah, like r- very, very early on. Respect. Ryan's black friend. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. You got White Man Can't Jump, right? Yeah, I got a couple lines in that one. That was oh, fun. White Dude, that's Man so Can't cool. Jump. Yeah, that was fun. So that Hell one's yeah. like coming out soon. Actually. Soon, right? Shit. Yeah. I think so. Him and Dinklage, buddy cop movie. <laughs> that would be awesome. <laughs> Dude, I gotta pitch that to Dink, man. <laughs> the, the Dink Buddy Cop movie would be fun. The Dink and the Dong. The That's Dink what you and mean. the Dong. <laughs> Who's who? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That would be sick. All right, good. I got something to pitch. That's <laughs> we got something to pitch. Yeah. Okay, sick. Dude, Dinklage as a cop in a Buddy Cop, <laughs> right? That is fire. Oh, that's fun. That's so we're fun. In. We gotta write it. We're boys. cooking. We gotta write it. Well, thanks for having me, boys. Yeah, thanks dude, you're the around. best. And thanks always for congrats on helping me on everything. Of course, Thank man. You. you guys are killing it, man. Keep up great work. Thanks, Peace. Peace. Here are the rules. Urban Dictionary describes a bug man. I think I'm the dresser for the, the bug man competition. I just move faster. I think a little bit faster. You doing a bug man comp too? Uh, we're gonna get a product that has the most amount of low review. Almost impossible to <laughs> Read the instructions, start to finish, and then get started. I think that's my key to success. This is the screwdriver, right? Oh, that's, that's the wrench. Oh, that's the wrench? Danny was gonna be scrolling through the instructions, top, all right, what's your cheapest hammer? <laughs> Clock starts now. Yeah. So can we rent all that? Yeah, cool. Well, we don't rent measuring tape. What the fuck is that? How many women does it take to install a light bulb? One now. <laughs>